But we were talking about Lebanese language and, yeah. and your your type of Arabic comes from the Aram- Aramaic? Aramaic. Aram- so the Aramaic root, uh, so the Arabic Lebanese slang, Palestinian, Jordanian, Syrian, all of us come from the Hebrew, also a Semitic yeah. root. Uh, but uh, What do you mean by Semitic root? It's the root of the language from the, look, we are the Semitic region, so Lebanese are Semites, Syrians oh, are Semites. Right. So I can never be an anti-Semite, yeah. you know what I'm <laughs> Of a self-hating lab. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, we have to learn Arabic at school. They force us to learn Arabic. Think of, uh, you know, it- Italian. No one speaks Latin. They speak Italian. If they want to speak Latin, they have to study Latin. They need to learn mm. it, learn how to read. And it's an ancient language. Arabic, think of it as Latin. It's a written language. The news is on Arabic. It's an Arabic. News readers actually on TV speaking Arabic. Like just general Arabic. General. They read yeah. Arabic of a script in Arabic. Sometimes interviews are in the, in the slang, in the dialect. Mm. But uh, special reports on Arabic. So Saudi Arabia, Lebanon, whatever it is, they all, we all study Arabic. It's the language of the Quran as well. So many people will study it for that. But even if I don't speak the dialect in Morocco, we can speak Arabic with each other. Because it's kind of it. forced upon us. Oh, so. But if you want to say, I want to go home mm. in Arabic... It's Uridu an Adhaba il al Bayt. Jesus Christ, man. It's a fucking essay. It is. Uridu, al- Uridu an Adhaba. I an want adhaba. to go. Think of this. Forget the house, Bayt. Uridu an Adhaba is I want to go. Uridu an Adhaba. That's right. It's I want Uridu to go. Uridu an Adhaba. Uridu. Mm. Uridu an Adhaba. Anta turidu. Ana urihum yuridun an yadhabu. Don't worry about all yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Some they, the the conjugation, all that stuff. <laughs> Uridu an Adhaba. I want to go. You know what it is in Lebanese? What? Baddi ruh. That's it. But it oh. So it's different. Wow. So it just shows you how different Arabic is because people go, You speak Arabic? Oh, I speak Arabic. Like no one speaks <laughs> yeah. it. Unless we're forced, we don't speak it. So so yeah, so you wouldn't speak Arabic, you would speak Lebanese. Lebanese. You'd say Lebanese. Yeah. Oh. I speak Lebanese, yeah. We all oh, speak shit. Lebanese. And Lebanese because it has different root to Arabic. Arabic we have to learn it. Ah, oh, interesting. But but generally speaking, everyone would understand Arabic, but they would they studied it at school. Versa. Which, which they do though, because you're they, saying it's they, forced. It's kind of forced. All the Arab everyone. countries, it's forced. Yeah, as long as they're uh, um, studying the the Quran as well. Not necessarily. No, no. Arabic is like oh, just I was in Lebanon. We spoke Lebanese. We go to school. We study Arabic, English, French. At oh, school. French too. Because mm. we were under French rule after World War One. Oh, so just Lebanon. Lebanon. Yeah, France took Lebanon, and uh, Britain took Egypt mm. because you know. And like, who wants the slice? You know how they are. It's, like, right. it's my country, man. I know. Come on, man. And they go, just split it up. Split it up. Bring, bring uh, come on, bring them. We've, we've killed six million uh, Jews in Europe. Put them here. They go, but the Palestinians didn't kill them. Ah, shut up. Yeah. Take it, take it. It's your land. Go ahead. They go, easy, easy, boys. Like, uh, let's, can we all live together? No. <laughs> like, okay, no. I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. That's my summary of the Middle East crisis. Yeah. So, yeah. so, that's f- <laughs> so, so, wait, so... If you, what's, which area of the Middle East is mm-hmm. the hardest for you to conversate with? Oh, I would say when it becomes North African mix. It's because, different, yeah, much yeah, different. Yeah, much different. Like Tunisian yeah. becomes Algeria. harder. Algeria. It's kind of, yeah. Morocco, oof. Because Morocco That's has right. French influence and all oh. that. So but then uh, Iraq, it depends if you're from the country. Oh, right. You know how it is. Well, it's like, everywhere, the dialect. It's everywhere. So their dialect becomes more difficult. Even when I studied German and I moved to Germany, I was living in Bayern, and Bayern is their accent is like uh, Texas or whatever oh. it is. Like It's like thick German. No, no matter what you study, it's not going to prepare you to live in Bayern. And re- and re- in the real in Bavaria. world. Yeah, live in the real world, no way. Bro, even in America, dude, I, I, I've been to New York, you know, uh, LA, all, all the major cities. But you go to like Louisiana... You don't know what the hell these people are saying. Yeah, yeah. And they're speaking English. Yeah. But they also have their own dialect of English or yeah. whatever, their Creole and all those things, right? I remember I studied it at grammar at Goethe Institute in, in Sydney, like proper German grammar. And I moved there and I get to the first day at work and a guy named uh, Simeon, my friend, Simeon. Sim- such a French Simeon, a, a German, German French. Bayern. Oh, Bayern. Bayern Simeon. Simeon. And I said to him, uh, my name, like, ich heiße Fadi. My name is Fadi. And he goes, Hobriere. And I had studied it, <laughs> ich habe die Ehre, which is like, I have the honor. I am honored to oh. meet you. But he said, Hobri Ehre. And that like one thing through you. And I go, what, what the f- is he talking about? And uh, it took, took you, it takes a while to get used to buying yeah. Bayerisch and then we go on. So, so why did you, why did you move to Germany? Oh, my ex-wife is German and 
Oh. Uh, we just had a kid, and her parents gave us a house at the time. In Bayern? Yeah, yeah. In uh, Augsburg, next to Munich, in that city. It's a massive house with a garden, a basement, attic, like we're talking. Uh, and we had just had our baby first child. She was three months old. And we were thinking, are we going to stay in Sydney? <laughs> because Sydney is insane. Like, it's like $600,000 for a house. Easily. <laughs> like at the time, yeah. we were appalled 14 oh years God. ago. Appalled. Yeah. Now it's two million. Yeah, not even close. So we thought, sure, I'll move there and uh, move to Germany, live there. I'd go watch the Champions League, though, uh-huh. and in the Allianz Arena and all that. My friends, he goes, you want to come? And the first time they told me, I said, I, I, I bought peanuts and beer. I'm going to have yeah. it and watch it yeah. home. Yeah. I don't to drive to your house to me. He goes, not to my house, man, to the stadium. Really I said, really? No way. He goes, yeah, you want to watch Messi tonight? Like, I said, what do you mean? He goes, it's 18 euros, the ticket. And I went, yes, of course I want to go watch Messi. So I watched all of Ronaldo, Messi, all of them at the Allianz. It's 18 euros it, at the time yeah 18 euros at the time you're because but like you might be standing years. with us in the, in the behind the because we're the fan club we're right behind the goal oh wow so you don't no. have the best view of the pitch <laughs> yeah. because like view is top center you see everything yeah and he go, i said behind Who the cares? goal i don't care i'm i'm just happy to be in the state i know and then ronaldo has a free kick against bayern munich that night yeah and i go oh my god i'm sitting there i'm right behind the goal ronaldo's about to kick yeah. a free kick and I'm watching it, and all I see is all these German fingers going fuck to, oh, to Ronaldo. Yeah. I go, oh yeah, they hate him. They oh, want right. him to lose. Yeah. Like, I'm just starstruck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And go, I'm You're watching neutral. Ronaldo. I go, no way. You're yeah, gonna yeah. get it. You can't. You can't give him the finger. <laughs> I was like, how You're could lucky you? Lucky to like, be here. This man, you know, the poor man. The poor man. <laughs> the poor richest man in the world. Freak it out. All, Wait, all of them are millionaires on the pitch. All of them. Easily. They're watching them, yeah. How, you're saying it like it was 50 years ago, 18 year olds. That was what, 10 years ago? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bro. I'm talking, yeah, no, I moved back to Sydney seven years ago. So, yeah, it's been, yeah, that was God 10 years damn. ago. damn. So, how many games did you go to in Bayern? Look, my team since I was a kid was Juventus. Oh, so, so you're, like, you're like, I Italian, love Juventus. Serie I, in Serie A, I was oh. like a big, big fan. They had Zidane and all that. Oh, so my beautiful. When Ju- when Juventus came, I watched Juventus at Del Piero, like one of my favorites. Oh, man. Yeah. OG. So yeah, and yeah. I was watching everyone Morata and Pogba running, and uh, Gigi Buffon. You know Buffon? Do I know Buffon? Okay, so I'm go of goal I'm centers. watching him warm up before the game, and there is a side of the pitch all these uh, ads that run, and a guy was leaning on the ads watching Buffon kick it with Pogba and all that. <clears throat> Paul Pogba. Paul Pogba. Yeah, and he goes Gigi, Gigi. He kept saying to Gigi Buffon, and Gigi turned. So I start screaming with the guy, Gigi, <laughs> Gigi. And the Gigi the, turns and he goes, hello to both of us. And like we look at each other like we've achieved something. We were, t- <laughs> he said hi to us. And then, <laughs> and then before the guy leaves, a minute passes, I'm standing there leaning on the ad still and go, um, Gigi. <laughs> I start screaming, Gigi. Again. And he turns towards me and goes, hey. I said hi, <laughs> what, what do you want from yeah, me? Yeah. <laughs> And I was, I went, I went like this, and I just moved up, and I went back to my ex-wife, to the, to <laughs> back home. I said, you're not going to believe what happened to me tonight. She goes, what? I said, Gigi Buffon told me to shut the fuck up. <laughs> you know how awesome that is? <laughs> just shut up, man. You didn't give a fuck. No, he told me, like, I'm going to stop screaming, man. Yeah, I'm warming man. up. Yeah. Because again, we've said bye. We've said hello yeah, to you already. Right, man. Just enough. <laughs> the deal, you know, I went, okay. <laughs> okay. Good cazzo. Bloody hell. Okay, cazzo. That's pretty sick, man. So, you, you, so who's your favorite player of all time? Oh, I have a few. Uh, I would say Roberto Baggio. Oh, was, Baggio. Okay, he was, he was like, I love, I love anything artsy and sport. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. then it depends on the position. Like, cause I'm a Juventus guy. Juventus. Yeah, Nedved was amazing on the on the wings, yeah. and uh, you, we had uh, Edgar Davids, and we mm. had some icons. Ibrahimovic is one of oh, the man. best players of all time. He's fucking. Oh my god, I love them. I love him. I saw him live too. So I'm, good. Maybe I'm I'm old. Should I be liking the new ones? I don't know. Nah, but uh, like Ibrahimovic, I think Ronaldo. And when you look at Ronaldo Messi thing, I think it was artificially inflated. This whole, you know, who's gonna win it this year? There are other players, you know, that are like only yeah. Modric broke it one year and he won best player in the world. But the rest was either Ronaldo or Messi. Yeah, no. What what, a, what about, about like when I was Holland. in Germany? Holland. Holland no. What about uh, Lewandowski who scored yeah, man. five goals in Peace. nine minutes when I was in Munich? Uh, came to the office second day. He had scored five goals in nine minutes. You saw it live? Look, it was the night before. Oh, the the night I before. didn't see it. No, I didn't oh, see it live. Beautiful. But beautiful. when I was living there, yeah. the whole office was talking about it. 
Even Guardiola is looking, going, what yeah. the hell is going on? Yeah, yeah. Tonight, but see, he's never won it. He's never even yeah. won it. That's interesting. So you have actually. strikers like that haven't won it. Yeah. So football for me, I, I love it. I love it. So you, uh, when you were in Bayern, you that was the Lewandowski years. In Bayern it was Mario Gomez. Do you remember that striker? Yeah. Okay. So yeah. he was their striker and uh, Müller. Müller. Oh, Müller's a beast. <laughs> He's a beast. Beast. He's a was beast. It, wasn't Robin on? Bayern? Arian Robin was there. Arian Robin, right? Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. he was there. Um, amazing left foot. Like the, so fun, when he yeah. would cut outside the penalty area yeah, yeah, yeah. and curl it, and he and would score that goal weekly. Whereas yeah. when Messi did it, they go, Messi, yeah. pure genius. <laughs> you yeah. know, but Robin does this every, every week. week. What's with this hype? I mean, I love Messi. He was yeah. He's my favorite player. Unbelievable. Yeah, unbelievable. No one like him. No. I have a theory yeah. about that. What's I don't theory? know if it's a football podcast, but yeah, I know, right? Yeah. I don't even I'm not even that big of a football fan. I mean I am, but like I don't know enough to have a whole conversation. I was just thinking about Messi and Ronaldo the other day and say, Who's your who do you like? Messi or Ronaldo? It's like Pepsi or Coke. Like, you know what I mean? This mm, question. Same. I said, Messi such a god-given talent watching him is pure joy yeah. he's needling the passes mm. through people like his, his skill his dribbling this uh, god exciting. given god given talent shows you how beautiful football can be ronaldo it shows you what you can do if you just train work yeah and i feel the ronaldo path is more achievable for the young mm -hmm. kids True. Because even if you're not as talented as Messi, look if you just dedicated, yep. look what can get you. Don't Definitely. you feel that? That's I feel that about Ronaldo. 100%. I feel that way in terms of comedy as well. I see the yeah, exact same yeah, way. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, skill can always outdo talent. Yes. Right? Because you can work on your skill. You can't. Your talent hits a ceiling after a certain point. That's right. right? Your so, likability hits the ceiling. That's like people, oh, that same guy would like it. Yeah. But then when your work ethic drops, you go, oh, he's not as mm. funny as he's used to. There be. you go. Simple as that. Yeah. It's just a consistency, really. So yeah, I agree is. with that. That's a, the yeah, people theory. don't fail; they quit. Is that oh, that's say? a good one. That's a good one. Where'd you yeah. where, where'd you hear that? Because I heard that recently it's, too. It's a, it's a street uh, saying. I is call it, it yeah. street. I like I say, street jokes. Uh, I, you street know, there's, jokes. A, there's a street joke. Yeah. You, know, when, you know, some comedians go up and they say a street joke, and yeah, you, yeah. Go, you didn't write yeah. that. And but and then, <laughs> yeah. but then part of me, like in the old when I first started stand up, it's like seven. It's been seven years now, but I I used to go, that's not his joke. I've heard it from, a, and now I think people are laughing. Yeah, the, whole idea, <laughs> the whole idea is to make them happy that night. Did, yeah. uh, whatever. I'm not going to judge people. What I don't like is if those people get more opportunities than I do because because oh, of yeah. the joke they took or whatever. Yeah. Right? I'm like, well, that, that's just not fair. Man, someone, when, some person, when I first started stand up, my first year, someone stole a joke of mine. Your joke? Yeah. And then what happened? They they kind of they, kept using it or it was just they, the one time? They used it uh, five or six times. It was oh. heard all over Sydney. And it was just crushing. And I never. I never, it was very short. Yeah. It was uh, not getting good reactions usually because it's a thinking joke. I said something like, uh, I said my local pub s fixed the cigarette vending machine and my dad came back. <laughs> okay. Nice. It was that kind of, you have to do the whole link of the, oh, he went out for a pack of cigarettes. And then I would say, and so did 10 other fathers in the neighborhood. As well. <laughs> like I was, but the, my father and I had such a loving relationship. So I stopped saying it anyway. It didn't make sense to me because mm. it's part of my storytelling. Or, but uh, someone had taken that joke. I said, Fatty, someone's doing your joke. I said, oh, yeah. I'm only one year in. I said, okay. if it can be stolen, that's, I shouldn't be saying it. That's a good, that's a good point. Right? That means it's not really it's coming true. from me. True. Because when something's coming from you, it can't be stolen. It can't be stolen. Yeah. So that's, no matter, Even if they say it word for word, yeah. you have the certain type of mannerisms or delivery or timing yeah. that no one else can emulate. That's right. And yeah. I think that's what makes a person ultimately yes. unique. A hundred percent. Yeah. So when, when you were in, you grew up in Lebanon. Yeah, 24 you were, years. You were born and raised there, obviously. Mm. What, in mm. Beirut? In uh, South Lebanon, which is, Lebanon, the whole of it is 12, 220 kilometers long. That's the country. Oh, so it's very... And the widest point is 80K. Oh, that's it? <laughs> that's it. That's very tiny. It's 10,000 square kilometers. Uh, I think there's a lake outside Canberra it's for water <laughs> rain collection. It's it's as big Size as Lebanon. Of Lebanon. Yeah, <laughs> it's just they a, should call it Lebanon. I think Lake Victoria. It's called. Yeah, it should be uh, Lake Lake Lebanon. Lake Lebanon. <laughs> we'll come take it and say this. You know, originally <laughs> uh, ours. Yeah, listen. This is the we'll, same height, <laughs> same <laughs> length, same everything. Just name it. Come on, you already named everything else. <laughs> fucking random names. So I'm from South Lebanon because of I'm from the south. Uh, I got I had to leave home in the eighties. I witnessed the Israeli invasion of Lebanon, 1982. Tanks coming to our village, oh. uh, all that stuff, and you know, going back. So, 17 years during the war, I lived. Uh, we rented an apartment. We couldn't be living in our house because of the war. 
Wait, was very dangerous where oh, we were from. So you said you so you rented an apartment where? So I uh, like I was at school one day and and, uh, and then my sister came said, "Fatty, pack your stuff. Our village is being attacked." Oh. And I went, "Okay." So I I'm I'm 9 at the time or 8. I didn't know what that meant. I get there, my father is trapping mattresses to the roof of the car. Uh, my mother is like carrying photo albums because we had families who stayed in our house, six families who had fled their home. And the woman kept saying to my mother, my only regret is the photo albums. I have no photos of my babies when they were kids. You know, babies. So mom was just taking that, making sure she has those. And we jumped in the car, four kids, mom and dad, and we thought, yeah, we'll be back any time. I don't know, it's just temporary. And ended up living in uh, Biblos, which is in the middle oh, of Biblos. Lebanon. Okay. Yeah, people lost for 17 years. We didn't go back home. Wow. But they didn't hit that area at all? It was just that no, it never did. village? No, it never did. Never got... I mean, that area, yeah, there was a... I'd say a two years maybe of kind of... Um, I never call it civil war because it's other people funding factions in Lebanon to fight. You know how it is. Proxy wars. What, what, I don't know what that is. What's proxy war? A proxy war is uh, instead of uh, America fighting Russia... They get militias to enter Ukraine. They pay them to destabilize the, the let's say, the region. Mm. And that way, it's not really direct war between U.S. and Russia. It's called a proxy war. Mm. So, for example, Russia can do the same and get their own militias from the Balkans, whatever it is. And say, I don't know why I said that. <laughs> Balkans? <laughs> the Balkans. I wanted to say Balkans. That's <laughs> right. But so uh, that's what a proxy war is. So, ah. for example... It could be Saudi Arabia funding people, Israel funding people, Iran funding people, and then all, you know. Mm. Iran has uh, funded a lot of people in Lebanon, you know. Yeah, they built a whole highway the, the, well, the, in Lebanon. It's good that they helped you guys. They built the highway, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah they should help the, their own country. <laughs> Listen, as long as I... <laughs> you know how it's like you hear people like having domestic violence and you go, look, as long as not parking my parking spot, that guy, I don't know. Go ahead. <laughs> that's so bad. <laughs> Actually, that is horrible to say. <laughs> but that's how it is when people tell me, why are you so pro-Palestine? Why do you talk about I go, well, it's like seeing your neighbor beat his wife. And, and you go, <clears throat> uh, instead of saying, like people say, you know, the, the wife, uh, she should have been wearing whatever she's wearing, you know. And you go, okay, but can we just tell him to stop beating her for a bit? Can we at least just say that? They yeah. go, it's not your job. It's not none of your business. He said, but you're giving him a bat to mm. keep beating her. At least don't give him the bat. That's the situation in the yeah. Middle East. So, and so for me, uh, I just, like, I mean, I did digress, but that, yeah. that, <laughs> that uh, idea of, um, of proxy wars, mm. uh, it's always been like this in our region. Because Lebanon, you know, Australia has Anzac Day, right? Yeah, I've heard of that. So what is that? Australia and New Zealand Armed Corps. It was Australia and New Zealand went to fight in the world wars. Yeah. So they were in Gallipoli where a lot of Australians uh, really died to defend mm, Australia. Yeah, yeah. It's world war. Like it's the world war. Right. I think um, one, I don't know, but, uh, world, world War II as well. Uh, no, they had Japan attacking. Mm. I think one rocket or yeah. something came to Australia. But what happened is when they sent the soldiers to fight... All these soldiers, when they return, they have returned servicemen's league, RSLs. All of them are <clears throat> for the returning servicemen. Mm. That's what it stands for. Yeah. So I say Anzac honors the Australian and Kiwi soldiers who went and fought and died overseas. Mm -hmm. We don't have an equivalent in Lebanon because wars come to us. Ah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So we don't, <laughs> we don't export. We just right. import. We just, Everyone yeah. wants to come and give us come, freedom. Come. Right. So I have a lot of freedom now. I can, we can just handing out freedom now. Yeah. Everyone gave us freedom oh, throughout right. my time. Just let us be, man. Yeah. And I don't think Iran has attacked another country, like actually in how long? Well, I mean, to be honest, it's a whole other thing, but I think yeah. they have their own problems within their own country. Yeah, of course. Which has been a big thing in the past couple of years. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, it's all bad. It's all fucked yeah, up. But I mean, America, <clears throat> in my area, they've just... America they still... Have bases, they have like, Why? They're still Is there in Lebanon? America is in Syria. Yeah, so I know that. Still taking the oil from Syria. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I'm not saying anything controversial. <laughs> yeah, actually, go look well, it no, up. it's true. It's the truth. They yeah. control all the, all the um, oil fields there. That's, That's why petrol is cheap. That's why I said, listen, <laughs> uh, when you bomb Arabs, it's 80 cents a liter. As soon as Russia, Ukraine started, two bucks per liter for fuel. Never, <laughs> like, <laughs> don't bomb blondes, man. Uh, yeah. No one yeah. will see blonde refugees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is our thing. You yeah. Know? There you go. Are you happy now? You had yeah. to fight the Russia. Yeah. <laughs> Just, thank, thank you. 
Just come back, bomb bo- us a little bit. Yeah. I just <laughs> need to get to work. Yeah, come on, man, please. It's been a while. I need a fix. <laughs> But America changes villains every decade. You know, I know, remember right? Remember, there used yeah. to be Nazis, that, yeah, uh, yeah. Iran is a phase, I you know. have Russia, and then Arabs, a long time there was Arabs, us after September 11th, and now it's yeah. back to Russia. Yeah. It's, uh, it's did, like fashion. I know, right? Did you, did you uh, when, when after 9-11 happened, did you, how did you, what was your experience growing up after that? Because I came here at 24, and few, I just slipped into the country right before September 11 happened. Right before, yeah. So into it was Australia. Uh, into Australia, yeah. Oh, so I so arrived February, lucky. September, and then that September it happened. Oh wow! My Palestinian friend woke me up. Like it goes, Fatty, wake up! America's being attacked. And, ah, and I just covered myself. Yeah, yeah. We're all students, you know, <laughs> studying at uni. He's doing engineering, computer science. I don't know what he was doing. And, I'm, ah, and then I get up, <laughs> and then the second tower got hit, and I'm going, "The hell's going on, man? What's with these buildings? Like what?" I mean, I grew up surrounded by destroyed buildings, you know, like, oh, what's, so what's happening there? Or right. Is it like a war? Or yeah. And then second day, and I tell a joke about this on stage, I'm walking down the street, it's so Western Sydney, yeah. Kingswood, yeah. and Penrith, and I'm walking with Omar, my friend, and this Aussie guy goes, get away from my front yard, you Arab bastards. Oh, wow, right away. Second day, September 12th. Right after. Yeah, because it was, oh, Bin Laden oh, did it. Oh, Wow. And I on stage I say so I said to him, "Come on, man, we had nothing to do with the attack." And he goes, "What attack?" I said, "Oh, okay." He's just racist. He hasn't heard yet about September. <laughs> Wait till he finds <laughs> Wait out. Till he f- <laughs> so that's what I. Of course, oh, that's I, I funny. Did, did that's funny. That's funny. It took me a second to get that. Yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> yeah. What attack? Yeah, I was like, that's funny. That's so true, though. But uh, I keep saying I started. That's when I started shaving. I should have oh, yeah. invested in Gillette. Yeah, Gillette. Yeah, really Australianize yourself. Yeah, like get I minus gown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, right. Yeah, should be right. Was it was it, was it a big culture shock for you coming to Australia with the accent? People keep telling me this is not the Lebanese accent. What you know, you're talking with right now? Australians. Yeah, I said this is not. This is the Lebanese accent. It is. Yeah. And they go, no, no, it's like, oh, fully sick, bro, you know, you're going to go. I said, no, oh, that's Western that's, Sydney accent. Yeah, that's, that's Aussie not, Lebanese. That's like Aussie Lebanese. This it's is walking. the Lebanese. This is the true Lebanese. Yeah, I yeah. said, it's basically, you go Western Sydney, if people are talking like this, you wouldn't know if they're Italian, Greek, Lebanese, right. Turkish, you wouldn't know. No. Because all of them, that, it's, not, it's, not, it's not a Lebanese we accent. We all look the same, too. It's a regional, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we do. We look the same. Everyone always thinks, that for me, for example, even here in yeah. Canada, it happens all the time. People think I'm either Turkish, Greek, Italian, or Arab. It's the wow. foremost I always get before Persian, actually. Yeah. So, but that, that's what I'm saying. Like most of those people, you need to wear a T-shirt that says "I hate America." <laughs> they go, okay, he's from he's Persian. Yeah, he's yeah. Persian. <laughs> he's Persian because that's what they know. That's all they know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We want. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. It's, also, well, you're not on brand. That's your problem. So, so not on brand, man. I'm, I'm, t- I'm too Canadianized. I'm too Canadianized. People tell me we don't believe you on stage and go, oh, "I'm Lebanese." You go, "He's not. He's just. It's a bit." We, we, Aussies. <laughs> Are they retarded? Some people, uh, after <laughs> I got off stage, oh, you really, wow, this is your accent. No, I was just doing it for <clears> an <throat> hour straight. Yeah, No can exhausting. You, can, can you imagine, I, I, I told them, it's like, you know how Mystique in X-Men <laughs> yeah. can change yeah, form? Man. But she can't maintain the form. No. It's exhausting. Jesus. I can't speak this accent all the time. Have a little common sense. I know. Mate. <laughs> Nah. You're fucking cheeky yeah, bugger. <laughs> I love that the bugger is always cheeky. Bugger, yeah, cheeky. It's always a cheeky and bugger. bugger is like, it's like <laughs> that's Oh, it's, that's ba- it's fucked. Yeah. Oh, you got buggered. Oh, oh you got fucked. Oh. Can't be fucked, mate. Shit, <laughs> shit, <laughs> mate. So it, when you're in Lebanon, um, because you were so close to the the, the tanks and all those things, yeah, would you, would you say that you got desensitized early on? Oh man, I still I'm traumatized probably because I go to the beach and people probably. throw these, you know, those, whew, you know, it's like rocket shaped. Uh, thing it's like rubber made of rubber but has a whistle inside it and oh. it has like fins at the end and the, the like footballs. a rugby yeah like like a football the nerf 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 footballs, nerf footballs but nerf they have like a tail and yeah, a yeah few. I know what you mean I know I used to have those yeah, like, when right. I hear it I duck yeah. I even duck to this it. day yeah yeah but well, first reaction is duck fuck man because uh, I was wild. in bomb shelters and wow. I was I built bomb shelters when I was like ten I would be helping. There were shitty bomb shelters, by the way. Well, but ten. one day, like we had a big gust of wind after the war finished, and they fell. Like the actual bag, sandbags fell, and I laughed. About it. I, meant, I talked all about it in my show last year. I said how uh, how we build things in life that we think give us safety. We do that in relationships. We do everything, mm. and then you don't know. One day the wind came. Like it's, it could never have withstood a bomb, yeah, or a blast. Yeah, it's just a bit of gust of wind. Boop. 
Just a little bit. I said because it was built by ten year olds. <laughs> like my father's well, sitting there eating peanuts like a fatty. <laughs> come on. <laughs> fill fill the good job. Uh and they're and they're playing cards with the neighbors and the boys are filling up the Not even care. No care. Insane. <laughs> That's why I love your humor, man. The first time I told you, I saw you and followed you before I met you. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. actually, I thought that's so funny. Oh yeah, the dad the, stuff. The right? dad stuff, the clearing of the throat. <laughs> I'll tell you a dad thing from mine yeah. that's uh, very unique. I don't know if it's to my family. And uh, for example, we'd be sitting with my father at the dinner table, mm. and he would say like, he's eating with the Lebanese bread. Yeah, obviously, everything is is, is bread, bread with Lebanese people. And he said, "I just you actually sorry." <laughs> You see that? I don't know if you saw this video. Uh, these guys, John and Nick Kairouz, they're from Sydney. Um, uh, yeah, Bernard. Bernard, yeah, yeah. yeah. They had a video John recently Bernard, about yeah. like how uh, Lebanese people, they everything is um, uh, bread. Lebanese bread is 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 utensil. It's bread itself. It's oh, everything. I haven't seen for, that yet. He's yeah, because he's, he's like, hey, can I have a spoon? He's like, yeah, here, and he passes him bread. He's fearless. He go, walks up to people like, and oh yeah, they're, they're, they're funny. Yeah. They're very very funny. Yeah. those boys, but. But it's the it's the Lebanese way of um you guys love your your bread a lot. The bread's great. Lebanese, it is great. Yeah, it's kind of, it's a nice little medium between eating with your hands. Yeah, but you are eating with your hands. But yeah. it has a little bit of a layer that. Yeah, and so yeah, we'd yeah, be sorry, sitting yeah. at the dinner table. My father would uh, grab some red bread and take, and he goes, "The car registration is due tomorrow." <laughs> you know, bro. Like you know, we we're gonna. I will need you and your brother to sort out the car registration tomorrow. <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then he would do this. You'd swallow. <laughs> and then this. What the hell, man? We've been waiting for you to finish chewing. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. To tell us the end. I go, dad, come on. Yeah. He goes, what, what? It's like, did you? Completely. Are you? Did you lose track? Do we have autism running in the family that Whoa. you can't focus on? Like, well, what is this? Just tell me, because I want to know. Yeah, I want to yeah. get diagnosed. You know, just what the hell is wrong with you? I'm waiting. The suspense of waiting for that <laughs> bite, you know, to get Yo. swallowed, only to take another one. It's just, mate. He's thinking about something else. He's thinking about He's politics gone. back home. Huh? Whatever, huh? Oh, yeah, the car what? registration. Yeah, 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 we'll, yeah, we'll sort it tomorrow. Good. We, I thought my brother and I are sorting it. No. I don't know how to sort it. <laughs> Khalas. <laughs> my father taught me how to drive at, at 13. Yeah, you're telling me this. At 13. And you know, for two weeks, reverse parking. Because you saw how I parked when I came today. Bro, One listen go. to me. If you're watching this or you're listening to this, Fadi Kasab. Kasab. Fadi Kasab. Fadi Kasab. Yeah. Fadi Kasab. Bro, honestly, <laughs> one of the best reverse parks I've seen. Yes. It was a very Habibi fucking... <laughs> very, very... One go. One go. You one didn't even go, you didn't, no, you didn't no, go no. forward, no, back. No, you went, no, you just quickly turned, boom, got out of the car. You were in the elevator since before I me. Since I was 13. Yeah, since you were 13. <laughs> that's, that's, that's why. My father put a big stone. He took me to like a hill next to the village, and he put a stone. Then he put another stone, and he goes, now reverse the car. I'm parking between these two oh, big stones. Wow. I said, okay. No problem. <laughs> So I did. I'm 13, but I'm tall for yeah. 13, and I could see Teenager. it's an old Mercedes, you know, from the 70s. He loved that stuff, and um, then he would say, "Okay, good job, do it again." I would. Then he goes, "Now he goes, gets the stone and moves it closer, makes the narrow na spot narrower for me to park." Wow. Because now try to reverse between these two. He's a savage. I go, okay, and I was like, he probably didn't care that I might hit the car. It's just an old car, you know. Oh yeah. Um, everything in Lebanon was an old car <laughs> And for two weeks He's teaching me how to reverse And reverse park And after two weeks I said dad What am I going to drive forward <laughs> And he goes Fad, worry. Fadi Anyone can drive forward I said wow. not me <laughs> I haven't done it yet Apparently not everyone He said everyone can drive forward It's the back that you need to worry about It's the reversing It's the parking It's the getting out of this He was the, right He was right is, <laughs> is this tattooed somewhere in your back Because no, anyone That's can some drive very forward. profound words, bro. Anyone can drive <laughs> yeah. forward. Anyone. Do you want to spoil, boy? Yeah. This is this is like a bigger message, like metaphor Isn't it? for Isn't the world, it? you know? Yeah. It's like anyone can do something, but if you're not it's going crazy. there. There's no police. There's no police in the country. At the at time, all? there's the war. There's war. Oh, so they're so free it's for a all. mess. There's nothing. It's just chaos. And you say, hey, your aunt is coming to visit from Beirut. Here are the car keys. Go buy some whiskey from the shops what? and the... I'm 13, and I go, okay, and I go and buy whiskey. 
You go, does my aunt drink whiskey? No, that's not. That's for us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's for us. I think to deal with the visit. That's crazy. <laughs> but to think deal that with a 13... Visit. Oh my God, that's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> to think that a 13-year-old is driving, buying alcohol, and coming back home. That's so wild. Yeah. And and it was normal. But you know why? I grew up not wanting alcohol because of it. That's good though. You, you... It's just available. It's always there. I yeah. could reach it anytime in the cabinet. Right. There's no lock. I go, ah, I don't want <laughs> I had it at 13. This week, it's been one year since I've had a drink. Hey, man, congrats. I stopped by mistake. Why? I mean, mean? I'm not a drinker usually, but uh, two months passed, I didn't have a drink. And then I was uh, touring with the Sydney Comedy Festival. I needed to give you free alcohol. And Frank goes, taste this wine. I said, I don't think I've had, how long has it been? Maybe a month or two? I haven't. Mm. So that taste is really good wine. I drank this much. I had the biggest hangover the second day. What? My body had cleared it out of my system. I wasn't used to it anymore. I spoke to my friend, he's a chemist. I said, what happened to me? I had a massive hangover from it. Mm. And he goes, oh, you lost the enzyme in your gut that breaks down alcohol because you haven't had it for a while. I said, oh, okay, what do I have to do? So he goes, you have to drink more. Once you start drinking again, you'll be able to break it down. No. <laughs> I said, but I don't enjoy drinking anymore. Oh, uh, and now it's been a year. Wow, and I, amazing. It's not like I'm sad. I say to people, you can want to drink. I go, no, uh, it's almost a year since I've had a drink. They go... Good for you. Yeah, yeah. I go, no, 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 there's no, there's no actual. I wasn't addicted, I, wasn't I a, promise. No, no. Yeah. Or the bouncers, did you have anything to drink tonight? I go, no. not for not for 10 months. They go, good for you. Come in, buddy. <laughs> yeah. It's like, a, all of a sudden, it's the like suddenly changes. the doors are opening. Yeah. You know? The girls are like, oh my God, really? <laughs> <laughs> you don't have alcohol. How is this going to look better then? How? <laughs> Wait, so you like me like for me? Like for me, for like my personality. No beer goggles? <laughs> really? I, I, uh, I'm going to tell you a bit. I wrote about that. Yeah, how yeah. men and women, um, I realize I'm attracted to women usually who are in relationships. Yeah. You, you're attracted to I'm women? I'm attracted to women when she's in a relationship. Oh, well, I mean, I and think I was that's thinking, just a um, classic one. I was thinking why people think why? Because like, uh, she's unavailable, yeah? Because she's taken. That's, that's why. classic. And I thought, no, no, no. It's because these women, they're themselves. When a mm. woman is with a guy and she's secure and she has her man, she doesn't play games or flirt or anything. That's it. It's all sorted. Yeah. She talks to you as herself. Yeah, that's true. And that's very attractive. Ah. I find that very attractive. I'm seeing the real you. There's no true. games. There's no agenda. Because, and I say, the only way guys can be like this with a woman where they can really listen to what she's saying and have a conversation is if they've already jerked off. <laughs> Right, and then, yeah, I said so. This post nut clarity is real, because then go. Oh, I can hold. For women, it's post nup clarity. Post <laughs> <laughs> it's not been getting laughs. This joke. Yeah, so I thought I'll just uh, it's kill it here on the it's podcast. It's an interesting one. It is. There's, it is. Some, there's clarity. It's, you can talk. A, there is some truth behind. By the way, uh, this is the Persian feast for the podcast. Oh or Persian God. offering. Yeah. Some gaz and some uh, sugar. Uh, sugar. I don't, I don't rock need sugar. Cubes. Yeah, we don't need sugar that actually, rock but. cubes. For tea, it's for tea. You drink tea? I drink tea. Yeah. Although I'm not gay, like I actually uh, drink yeah, tea. Yeah, me neither. Actually, but, <laughs> like, but if we can be gay together today on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's okay. You didn't. This is the like the most uh, Middle Eastern well catered podcast I've ever been in. <laughs> I usually go to comedians' houses. They're in their underwear. You know? They're just that's so true. <laughs> <laughs> just what are you doing here? How do yeah. you live in this squalor? Squalor is a perfect word, actually. If for the that. squalor now in 2024, how would they have been in the medieval times? They would have basically had zero teeth and they would be living with like rats and cats. Rats and, and sc- scurvy and... Yeah. Peppermint. peppermint? Why, why? Do, what do you say? What is tea in Persian? Chai. Yeah, with a T in the beginning. It's shy. It's shy, uh, shy in Lebanese. Ch- like shy, S H Y. Oh, you say S H. Shy. Shy. Yeah. Oh, interesting. English breakfast would be wonderful. English breakfast, yeah. Actually, let's do it properly. It would be lovely. <laughs> Since this is tea. One, one. One, one Habibi. Hold on. Do Persians drink it really dark? The yeah. Tea? Yeah. Like it's, uh, until it becomes bitter? A little bit? Like oh. in because. Uh, in Lebanon, it's like this. They would put so much sugar, pitch black. No, the oh, tea. tea. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. tea itself soaks for so long. Actually, no. I think Persians are more light. To be honest, okay. They like it lighter. No, in Lebanon. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's lighter. Yeah, I'll get some. Yeah, like we get Ceylon right, tea whatever. and uh, you know Ceylon. Yeah, yeah, yeah Ceylon, Ceylon tea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Well, What's... yeah, my mom, uh, sh- she's a connoisseur of tea, like crushes tea. Can I ask you something? So in your culture, yeah. do would they consider this a big, big waste to have one tea bag per cup? Because for us, it'll go in the entire jug that's going to, everyone's going to drink from like one bag is six people. What? No. So when I came to Australia, like one bag per cup of tea. No. That's insane. This is like waste. Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. No, so, yeah. It, it's it, per- Persians. Well, first of all, I, I think yeah, Persians and Indians, I think that they, they crush tea more than anyone I think but also okay. Arabs too obviously but yeah, yeah but yeah we're very light our tea for the most part I think from what I've experienced like my mom especially um, but but we have sugar cubes that some the white versions, ones the white ones oh they love those I used to put it in my mouth when I was I a know, kid I, was, just, I did the same thing yeah yeah oh. I was like oh my god it's crap did you like the condensed milk when you were a kid as well from those cans the, oh yeah have we, you ever had that I think oh my god we, actually like we, syrup we, with yeah. milk I don't know what it was, it was I, know, I loved it crack yeah but um, no, it's great, man. Um, I want to clarify something yeah. as well. Do you ever do people say I'm Iranian, or people always say I'm Persian in English? <laughs> it's so funny, man. It's like the b- biggest question of my life. I've, so it depends know? what kind of. Uh... It depends. I personally say I'm Persian. Okay. Okay. F- first of all, I was born and raised in Canada, so I'm not even from technically from Iran. Like okay. I am because my parents are from there. Yeah, and, of course. But, but I always. And I, and I speak the language too. We speak the language. So we're lucky yeah. that we at least understand it fully. And, you know, yeah. I, I mean, it's kind of broken, but nonetheless, I still know the language. But, but I can. Yeah. But I can in Yiddish. This is funny. The accent. Is funny. <laughs> <laughs> funny. You like Baroquan? I like uh, uh, Farsi. See, my, my father was a translator. Yeah, I was actually like ask Arabic, about that. English, English, Arabic. Yeah, so yeah. like for me, I never got a broken English dad. You know, that's what I'm saying. You 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 had the opposite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's but uh, he still yeah. had the accent. But yeah. Right. So what? Do you, so just continue your point. Um, right? When people ask me when I'm in Canada or even here, when people yeah. ask me what what like where are you from, I always say I'm Canadian, but I'm Persian. Yeah. Right? You talk about an ethnic lineage, not necessarily a a country, yeah, or like the Persian ethnicity. Yeah, yeah, Ethni- eth- because ethnic Persian wise. is an ethnicity. It is. For example, uh, like I said Jewish. Is, it's not well. It's kind of a faith. So, but for me, yeah. they say well because there was no land for two thousand years, so it became mm. that faith and ethnicity became one. Yeah. Uh, but then you have Persian as an Iranian to go. I'm Persian. Yeah. Just in case Iran in its current form falls apart. I'm still, I'm, 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 I'm good. Persian, right? yeah. I'm good. Yeah. Well, it, it's also another, just just for fun too. It just sounds better, in my opinion. The Persian Empire. Persian. 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 Very, very nice. Persian. It's like me saying I'm Phoenician though. It's like a Phoenician? Phoenician. Because it's Phoenicia Phoenician. was oh. the, have you heard of the phoenix? What the bird that, that dies oh. and flames and then three okay. days later rises from the ashes. Okay. Yeah. So the Phoenicians were the ones who invented the alphabet in the region. In Lebanon? Uh, in Lebanon. Oh. From Byblos. Uh, they sailed from Biblos Harbor, where, where I lived for many years, and they went everywhere all over the Mediterranean. And that's why everything comes from Biblos was bibliotech and Bible and oh, all. Interesting. Yeah, so our alphabet was Abjad how was Hotti Kalaman Safas Karsha. That was the initial alphabet they went to the world with. So anything coming from there was uh, it was like what's the, uh, the, there was one thing they said them. Um, so what they did is they traded. We were never conquerors, the Phoenicians. Mm. The Phoenicians were in the Levantine era. Well, basically, what is now Syria, parts of Jordan, Lebanon, Palestine, all that, that was like Phoenician, mm. that whole area. From the, And they came from Canaanites. So you go, I don't know how far back I can go and say, I'm Phoenician, are you? We may right. be Canaanite, keep going. Yeah. You know, and I, right. I don't know where to stop. I get it. So we say, oh, we're Lebanese. Uh. Even Lebanon, its current form was like post-World War. When France split it up, they split up the region. Yeah, completely. I don't know if they've ever done that before, <laughs> but <laughs> they do that. But Persian, I always found that's a very nice way because the Persian Empire extend. Mm. Did it? Hit, where do you know where it covered? Do you oh, have man. that? Uh, I don't have that much knowledge about it to be honest. I'm ashamed to say that. I yeah. should know more. But yeah, all I know is that. Um, well, actually. I think I think Iran, Iranian has a negative connotation to it. That's what I know. Yeah, in the Western of, world, yes. In the Western world, at least. Yeah. But also, and that's why I feel like a lot of people say they're Persian. 
is because they're like we oh, want to okay. really be so associated. Let's, let's, let's not go political here. Well, yeah. because they don't want to. That's be what they're saying to people. Exactly. Wanna, yeah, yeah, no, yeah. That misconception about me. Yeah, because I, they don't want to be associated with the Islamic regime that's going on. I get you. Know? you. I get you. Because uh, in 1979, it's, it, it, up until then, it was very progressive the country. Yeah. And then that's when the revolution happened, and then yeah. and then it became very. Do you know who funded that revolution? U USA? U.S. Yeah, yeah. The U.S. Yeah. Well, who else? Yeah. I love you. Yeah. We're yeah. gonna bring democracy to everyone. Yeah. It's like Oprah. You get you democracy, get yeah. and you get one. Yeah. But I get you. I get you. And so. then they form that stigma as well. That oh, yeah. they hate us. Yeah. They call us the great devil. Yeah, pretty much, man. And, the, and, the, yeah, and the, yeah. ever since then, me, it, me, even knowing this, knowing this as a child, growing up. Yeah. The very basic knowledge I had, I was like, oh, just intuitively speaking, I, I just Stay feel. Version. Persian is better. I, I feel more Persian. Than, I don't Fra feel Iranian. When you know? France no, took the country in the, after World War One, uh, basically all of Lebanon is like: if you dress like us and talk like us, then you're civilized. Then we will acknowledge you as a human being. So in Lebanon, post colonialization, colonization, you would see stuff like Lebanese people saying "Bonjour, kifak," like uh, they mix French, they mix foreign oh. languages, they dress differently, so that they go, "Oh, they're upper class." Oh, They're classy. Yeah. These people are respectable. But if you spoke your own language in your own country, pff, peasant. Peasant. You know what I mean? It's, it's that's a, crazy. That's what colonial, colonialism, colonialism does. That's what it does. So they we, that, but it's not like we hate the French. We call no, France yeah. our tender mother because they used to <laughs> always stand up for us. And, like, and that's what mm. they used to say in, right. in the news. But then you grow up going, no, I'll, it's good to identify with your heritage without being associated with the current political climate. But when there's such a massive campaign of demonization, mm. you go, yeah, um, I, let's not go, yeah, sure, sure, I'm, uh, uh, I'm, I'm Persian, that's okay, yeah. let's yeah. just go there, just, just go there, I don't yeah. want to go there, because people don't know any better, unless they've done their research. And well, well, that's the thing, too, is uh, it's, just, it's, it's, it's not black and white either. It's we can go to Iran without a visa. Who are you? Lebanese. Oh, beautiful, must be nice. <laughs> yeah. So I can't I, even go. Yeah, <laughs> you can't go? No. No, for real. I mean, you can go, but you can't leave. Yeah, yeah. What I'm is not this, gonna a come marriage? back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, legit. <laughs> you can yeah. go, but you can't leave. So, uh, yeah, as a Canadian, yeah, I'm not or as back. are you like a critic online on social media? Are you blacklisted, or what is it? Yeah, people before us. In the world. Yeah, people before like my yeah. My, my I come from like uh, the dethroned royalty. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I, I mean it, it's nothing bad. It's just um, I think because they're so strict with what you say about. The country okay, and okay, those okay, things, okay. right? And my parents, like, my, sorry, my dad and his father, um, he he was a journalist back back in Iran. Okay, and you know they don't uh, like that. Okay, so there's when you're, the, when yeah, you're yeah, talking, yeah. Like, what happens in Iran stays yeah, in Iran. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you're the yeah. Vegas it's of like the Vegas, Vegas, man. It's fucking <laughs> sick. No, but the thing is, it it, it is it, it is kind of sad because it is such a beautiful country and. Yeah. Um, just from what I've seen and what I've heard, obviously, it, it is beautiful. It has different seasons. It has different landscapes. The food is beautiful. The culture is beautiful. The, the music, the people themselves yeah. are some of the best people. Because you probably grew up with them in Canada, like with the surrounded by that. Yeah. But Canada, right? That's where you grew yeah, up. Yeah, Canada. Yeah. All we've known is the nicest Persian people. Yeah, of course. The, I've never met a Persian person who's like fucking dictator. Like, oh, like, like I, I never felt no, threatened no. once. George Collins says that he goes that people individuals are wonderful. You see the stars in their eyes, but when they start to group yeah. and form, that's when the mob mentality kicks in. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. all, uh, and that's when it's scary. When they start anything forming as, or organizing is yeah. scary. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. so yeah, that's why it's and it's risky for me to go there because I'm a Canadian citizen. Yeah. But because I'm associated with my my lineage, like you said. Yeah. Um. But and I have a, a, like a Persian last name too, and whatever yeah. that's similar, similar, obviously the same as my 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 dad and his father. They would be suspicious about that. They go, "What? What? You're Canadian, right? Oh, really?" And yeah. then they think I'm a spy or something like that. Wouldn't Canada step it up and like defend and bring you back? There's no embassy. Ah, that's why it's ah, risky. the rent must be expensive. In, <laughs> in hey, man, it's our, they're they're using all the rent in Toronto already, so they don't have enough money left. Yeah, of yeah. course, of course. So anyway, yeah, that's just kind of the gist of it, yeah. as far as I know. Um, obviously, it could be more complicated or more yeah. simple, but yeah. that's pretty much. Uh, generally speaking, you know, my family, other people, they're just, they're just like, yeah, it's just not. It's 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 kind of risky right now. Yeah, just with what's what's going on over there, and uh, I don't know, I don't want to not come back. 
Like, also, especially to, because I'm a comedian. To, to, because at this stage in your life, you don't care enough to learn every detail of the situation because you don't have any plans of going there at the moment. So you go, I mean, let it go. Let's see. I'll keep doing my thing in the future. Let's say in 20 years, if you want to go. Hopefully. And maybe something has changed and there's more leniency and all that. Yeah. yeah. I think uh, you, would, you would probably love it there. 100%. There's always a calling from the roots, you know. Definitely, there. man. I, 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 can, I just picture myself in the country in so, itself. And if you think about it, I've never been around a, a bunch of people that were just my people. I've never experienced that before. Right? Because where I'm from in Canada or everywhere I travel, it's mix of everyone right just yeah. like here you'll be like odo if you go back i don't know if you know the <laughs> reference that's odo deep, deep space nine reference he what's is, that uh, he's a changeling he can become any form he wants but he's from the planet of changelings and he's never been and when he finally goes back home mm. he becomes a drop in the ocean all of them like blend into each other oh, and he feels he feels i'm home and mm. he doesn't even need to talk right or explain this feeling because i just know yeah i'm surrounded by my people yeah yeah and, and that's for the nerds not the <laughs> yeah. nerds yeah, this is yeah. very nerdy, actually. Very nerdy. I'm surprised yeah. by the yeah. Yeah, yeah. I so I mean, because it's it's, I mean, you've obviously experienced that yourself because you were born and raised in Lebanon, right? Like yeah. you've been around your own people for a long enough time where yeah. you know what it's like, and then you you have the the perspective of coming here, yeah, and knowing the difference, right? Like you, I'm sure you feel that yourself. Hundred percent. But I've uh, you realize I've changed. I don't belong in Lebanon anymore. I'm not fully Australian because I'm an immigrant. Right, you're in the middle. That's why second generation usually has it easier. My kids has the have your kids have it easier. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. They're raised here. And sure. they, they have the Aussie accent. And oh, really? Oh, it's, yeah. It's, it's so, so weird to see. It's so weird. Weird to see German mother, Lebanese father, and the Aussie kids, accent. and the Aussie accent kids. You know. It's so weird. So odd. But they speak the languages or no? Yeah, German. And and their mom, like German, yeah, and Lebanese. But um, I have a friend who's a child psychologist. One told me, hey, "Don't don't get your hopes about them speaking Lebanese. Kids what? language." are their play language, is their play language. Whatever language they play in, that's their main language. You had probably the benefit of mom and dad are both Persian. Yeah. Yeah. So they don't. So if we were home always uh, talking true. Lebanese to each other all the time, mm. they'd pick it up and it'd be easy right. for them. But then yeah, divorce, German, mm. Lebanese. But they, I do speak them in Lebanese. They know everything, like put your stuff in the laundry. Are you oh. hungry? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta know. You gotta the know basics. the. Are you hungry? Because my mom's coming to visit oh, Australia soon. Okay, there you go. I'm just gonna, are you hungry? What can I make you? Mm. And all that. Uh, go take a shower. <laughs> hey, please clean yourself. You're my dirty. My mother. My mother. <laughs> Liba, she's insane. Like I called her. I'm talking. Australia gave her a visa for three months at a time, so she can three months get out, come back for three months. Oh, I don't know why they did that. Why didn't they give her like a year? Yeah. What's the difference? Anyway, she goes to me, I can't be that long away from Lebanon anyway. Oh. I mean, I said, how's it going? <laughs> she goes, oh, uh, an Israeli drone, like, uh, I think, uh, landed behind the, the hill. I heard two explosions today behind the hill. And I know the hill because you'll be on our balcony. Yeah. You see the hill and behind it. Right. And there was smoke. And she goes to me, there were two big explosions. I was lying on the sofa on the balcony. Uh, because our balcony, it's a typical Lebanese house. Our house is 720 square meters. Each floor is 360 square meters. That's so it's small. That's huge. Oh, wait, no, I'm thinking, sorry, thinking. I thought feet? you said 36. No, 360. 360. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're talking, it's big. Our balcony is 10 by 4. Just the balcony, 40 meters. We're talking as big this in the kitchen and that room, all that. It's just the balcony. So she is uh, on the sofa. <laughs> she goes, it's been, uh, it's been very muggy. It's been really warm and humid. I'm showering in the morning. And then I shower again before I go to bed. Sometimes I want to wake up at night and shower. That's how been humid it's been and muggy. And today there's a gentle like breeze and I'm on the sofa. And I said, mom, what about the fucking drone? Yeah, you just huh? skipped over it. Do you it. think it's hot because <laughs> there was an explosion next to you? She goes, ah, well, you know. I said, no, I don't know. You told no, me the explosion. I... Then you started ranting about humidity and uh, you have to shower. <laughs> it's just bleep. She goes, Google. ah. Just so desensitized. <laughs> That's just hilarious that she's uh, said, okay, come over to Australia. Uh, That's okay, I'll come. What's there to do? She goes, I want to take you to church every Sunday. <laughs> I said, every Sunday? Like you're here? She goes, yeah, maybe I'll find you a nice woman at the church. Hmm. I said, That's not going to happen. It's not going to work out. She goes, Why not? I said, well, because then I'd have to go to church. <laughs> that's your downside. Yeah, that's the like one I, thing that's, we're not let's agreeing take it on. Easy. Let's take yeah. it easy. On that. I was in the church choir when I was a kid for seven years. Oh, wow. I thought I'll meet girls there. Oh, wow. You're, you were a halal kid. Idiot. 
<laughs> Halal kid. <laughs> I love how so is Muslim the term halal. Yeah, you know? I know, right? Yeah. Yeah. I'm more of a haram kid. <laughs> yeah. than a... Right now we're definitely way more yeah, haram yeah. than ever. My God, living in yeah, Australia. Australia. So, I love Australia. I love it here. I love it. That's inter- And how many languages do you speak? Six. Six languages? Yeah. What the hell? Yeah, yeah poly- you're a polyglot. Yeah, probably because of my dad, he was a translator. Ah. He loved languages. But uh, so I speak Lebanese. Then at school, we study Arabic, English, French. We have right. to study that until you're 12. Amazing. So that's four. Wow. Then I studied Italian at the Italian embassy in Lebanon for four years because I was a big fan of Italy. And my first degree was jewelry design and gemology. And I wanted to do my master's in Florence to go. But then they drafted me to the military service in Lebanon. I couldn't go. And you actually were in the military? Yeah, I was for one year. Oh, wow. In the military. But then they canceled it two years after I did it. They said, okay, it's getting too complex and we don't have enough budget. But I had to waste a year. The government's like, oh, everyone's complaining, saying you're taking our kids right out of uni because they have to do the compulsory military service. They're missing out on job market. So the government, okay, we're canceling it. Like the mandatory yeah, requirement canceled is canceled. It. Yeah, but now canceled. it's just So optional? I had to do it. My older brother do it. My uh, younger yeah, brother. Yeah, yeah that, that was it. was done with. So, so then how do they have military now? No, no, it was compulsory service where you do three months of training and barracks and all that. Then they would... Put you for the remaining nine months somewhere. Like they put me on a checkpoint with the border of occupied Lebanon. Oh wow! I would see That's like Israeli scary, fighter just flying over me, and I'm going, ah, oh, God. And I never used to load bullets in my gun because I, when I stood guard for three hours, because I thought that's too heavy, bullets <laughs> too heavy. I'd leave them under my pillow. I would have been court court martial. Jesus Christ! Go, I'm like, who am I gonna shoot? <laughs> yeah, am I gonna what? shoot someone? I'm just doing this uh, yeah. temporarily. <clears throat> so. The Jeez. military service, and uh, after that, I studied German. Oh, okay. So I ended up with being your wife. Lebanese, Arabic, English, with French, your Italian, and German. Yeah. Why? Why Italian? I was a big fan of Juventus when I get, I love Italy in general. Mm. I love the culture, and my friend and I thought that would be fun. So I studied Italian, and you're fluent in it right now. Man, I haven't spoken it in so long oh. now. It's been like ten years at least since I've spoken it. But I used to spend every summer in Italy when I oh. when one lived in Germany, and I would speak with the locals. Okay. But then when you don't use it, you lose it. You lose it, yeah. That's yeah, but true. the thing is, I understand. Like, if people are talking, but if it's not too quick, mm. I know if I spend two months reviewing everything, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll remember all of uh. it. Same thing with French. Like, I, uh, je true. comprends français. I understand it. All that. You're Canadian. Do you speak French? Uh, no. No? Un petit peu? No? Not even. Not even un petit peu. Not even a little bit. We should, I should know it. Yeah. Because we um, pretty much, it wasn't mandatory, but we was heavily enforced to learn French yeah. in school, but... Just you can opt out, which I did. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Opt out. Yeah. Okay. It's a dead language anyway. <laughs> you think it's a dead language? Uh, French. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Of course. Why? Who speaks French? I mean, so Canada, many Canada, and, uh, and France. Yeah. And whatever Ivory is Coast, the remaining uh, co- Creole co- in uh, Haiti. Mor- I know Morocco, Tunisia, like any colonial, yeah, those, colonized yeah, countries. Yeah. The French. It. Yeah. But well, uh, country, who yeah. needs French to live? Think about it. Like actually to survive. I'd say English is better. That's well, not. obviously English. That's never. I mean, that's. I don't think that that'll ever go away. But what do you think the with French? Uh, Spanish is actually. I think way yeah. more. I would love to learn Spanish. Yeah, Spanish I, is. I was told I can easily learn it if I. One hundred percent. I know. I know Italian yeah. as well. And I took Italian too in school. Yeah. But I also just like you. Well, first of all, I didn't do the full thing. I yeah. only did it for one year. But now I only know like a few phrases, and I can understand it a little bit better. But like you said, if it's, it's been so long. You lose yeah, it, right? You but definitely then, lose but, it. But if you, yeah, if you like, because you know the basics. Yeah. If you just if you're around it for a couple months, you'll get it right back, which yeah, is very like, interesting. Uh, I, I think if there's like a beautiful woman, uh, suddenly it'll come back. I say, what is it? What is it? I'm the one. Why? Why sleaziness? The sleaziness has to kick in as part of it. Yeah. Come on, stay. Come on, stay. Come. Vieni, vieni qua. Vieni qua. Yeah. How do you say woman? Womany? Woman? A womany. Mormon is, is like women. men, a plural of men. No, no, a donna. donna. Huh? Donna. Donna is, is woman. Womo or yeah, donna. Yeah, mm. yeah. Womini is a plural donna. of womo. It means people. Womini. Yeah, womini. Yeah, yeah. It's people. Yeah. yeah. People, yeah. Un, how do you say beautiful lady? Una buona, buona donna. Bella donna. Bella donna. Yeah, that's true. Bella. Bella raga. Oh, bella ciao. Bella ciao. Bella, bella, ciao, bella. Yeah, that's, that's a banger, yeah. Oh, I, I forgot to... Um, <laughs> When you're t- uh, sorry, I had to go back to what you were saying about your dad at the din- dinner table. That was so funny because <laughs> that's exactly how my dad is, and I have a joke about it too on stage that I'm working on for my tour. Well, yeah. the clearing the throat thing. 
yeah is is a theme of the set right so um it's so funny that you said that would you say the line where he put, dips the dips the um bread into the what was it like he hummus? would drip the bread and he would say something like uh you know for you and your brother the car registration is due tomorrow right What are you doing? <laughs> waiting that's for the end of the set. Just, ah, that's it. You're yeah, waiting yeah, for yeah. it to swallow. Right. Yeah, so that, that's that. exactly what my dad does. That's it's crazy. The suspense. The suspense. <laughs> kill, it's like out of nowhere. Too, you could be like the happiest moment of your life. Yeah, somewhere yeah. I don't know. You're graduating, and then it's like everyone's hugging. He's like, oh. Um, go uh, if you can take this ladder and go uh, hang some frames. I'm like, bro, I just I'm going yeah. to graduation. It's like there's no good time. It's always <laughs> whatever they want to say, yes, they'll just say yeah. it. I'm in a suit. <laughs> like yeah. that. No, no, you need to hang the I'm chandelier. A, I'm, about, yeah. right now. <laughs> I'm about to get married. I'm walking the, down the aisle. <laughs> hey, uh, by the way, um, if you can take some screwdrivers, <laughs> go go uh, drill the grass. The, the, I'm the, like, bro, why? What? We're getting married. He's like, no, no, no. My father goes to me years ago. He passed away in 2019, but when I was still in Lebanon before I came to Australia, in near 2000, maybe. He goes, uh, I managed to get a banana tree. I said, okay. <laughs> Bananas everywhere. Yeah. He goes, it's a Japanese tree. Oh, I said, Jap- it's a Japanese tree, okay. He goes, uh, my friend is in customs. He got it for me. I said, okay. He goes, I don't know if it's legal to grow it here. I said, I think it should be fine. That. <laughs> then he goes, come with me. And we go down the house under the stairs Covered with sacks, like he had covered it. If someone is already in our house looking for it, gotta find it. And it's he goes, Come, let's, let's go outside. Bring it. I said, Okay. I was actually about to go to the city to do something, like uh, down like four kilometers away, but I was about. And he goes, Come, come. I said, But I just bring it. I said, Okay. So I'm, I'll go out to the garden. He goes, Okay, get, get the shovel and all that stuff. It's like burying a dead body. Yeah, what is it's going hiding on? under the stairs and. And I go, okay, he goes, dig here. Okay, a bigger <laughs> hole. I said, I'm digging. And he goes, now put it in. Okay, take, rip that back this round. Okay, make sure the soil is there. I said, okay. And he goes, build now some stones around it so that, you know, you build like stone, stone, stones, stones, stones. So that doesn't get landslides or whatever it is. I go, okay, get the hose. Now let's water it. Okay, it should be good. Uh, then he goes, Isabel, to my mother. Isabel! And she goes, what is it? Like she's always mopping. Always and like frantic. She's, she's always, what is what happened? She goes over the balcony, what? She's looking at us. He goes, look what we just did. I go, we? <laughs> <laughs> we? No credit. I did it. Yeah. I did the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. And he goes, it's like, it's, it's rude to just, to gloat like you did something. <laughs> the, then there's guilt. Yeah, the like, Fadi? Yeah. 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 Then, then I come to Australia. <laughs> I come to Australia and now the, the banana tree had gone up 12 meters. It was insane. Oh, wow. It really shot up. It was making, each banana is a kilo. Holy man. Right? And mom, I call her, I say, how's it going, mom? She goes, ah, we had a bit of a frantic day today. I said, why? She goes, three black jeeps parked in front of our house. Turned out he's one of the ministers in the government, the guy. What? And I said, yeah, okay, Did something happened? She goes, well... I opened the door. I go, that's the minister like from TV. That's the oh, guy, wow. you know, is yeah. one member of the cabinet. And he goes, hi, M- Mrs. Kassab. And she goes, yes. He goes, um, one of my workers in my uh, guy has a palace, you know, and gardens. He said that uh, you have a banana tree that's really <laughs> the yielding big bananas. She goes, yeah, it's, it's downstairs. So the guy goes in with all these bodyguards. They go down to look at the banana tree and he goes to her, and then my father came, and he goes to him, like, do you mind if we take some snips from it to, to plant? And that goes, of course. Like, uh, that was, pra- mom was freaking out. <laughs> yeah. The government is there, the police, yeah. our bodyguards. Yeah. And dad told me they came, and they, they took it. They <laughs> they look, the, look. I said, the banana tree, you plant. I said, don't put it <laughs> yeah. on me. Now, now it's my banana. As soon as yeah, the government now, of got course. involved, fatty planted yeah, hey, it. <laughs> it was him. It was him. It's like easy, man. Yeah. And then I got there 10 years later and said it was too much. We cut it all down. <laughs> wow. What a waste oh of time. God. Oh my God. Is anything, is everything something? No. Everything's nothing. <laughs> anyway, it's just funny. Oh man. I think we have so, a lot of parallels in the culture. It's oh like, man. 
And it's funny, <laughs> you pretty much built a bomb shelter for the bananas. For the banana? Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> mm. Tea's good, eh? So very good. Yeah, thank you. What do you what what's uh, would you do you, would you, would you say that having your your kids uh, in Australia has um, has like you growing up in Lebanon obviously oh they're wusses they're wusses probably they're gonna be wusses I love them too much like I hug them a lot you know yeah you you, you that's not them. good I think you need a bit of uh, guilt you need to earn the love uh, you need to work hard for it yeah. like they're supported. Mm. If they have an emotional thing, like it would be for us, like, oh, Sean, why are you crying? Uh, go to your room, cry and come back. Just uh, We're trying to eat here, we're trying to watch TV and watching the news. Go just do your thing and regulate yourself. And then you become part of the family when you come back, you hear me? Or yeah. else you're ostracized from the family. Crazy. That, isn't that the attitude yeah, yeah. in general? Yeah. So, but with my kids, if they're feeling something, they sit next to me, process it here. Don't worry, you are loved regardless. I'm going, this is not good. I mean, they're very balanced kids. They don't have phones. Or like oh, really? tablets or any of that stuff. They don't no. have and phones? they're fourteen and eleven. Oh wow. We just got a phone from my daughter because she takes the bus from school sometimes and yeah. just in case. Oh, but wow. sometimes she forgets it. She comes to my house, goes, Where's the phone? She goes, Oh, I forgot it, mom's. She doesn't oh, use wow. it. It's not part of her life. Interesting. It's not part of her world. So we raise them like this in a wow. Steiner school, which is like very much in touch with nature. They had none of that. Wait, what's a Steiner school? Man. Steiner education, Rudolf Steiner created it in Germany yeah. decades ago. And it's a kind of a holistic approach approach to learning. We usually no homework, no tests, especially in the formative years where a child up to the age of, let's say, 10, 11, all yeah. that. Why are you testing an 11-year-old? Like That's the idea. Yeah, is, yeah. Uh, one of the teachers once told me, if I test your child at 10 a.m. and he hasn't, like, the breakfast hasn't kicked in yet or anything, yeah. or something's off, and then we mark them based on the test or his capabilities, I could give him the same test at 2 p.m. and he would do amazing. She goes, we take a snapshot from that little part of the day at that hour, how he was feeling. And we say, your student is falling behind your son. Or Because it's a very bad system of judging, yeah. especially for a child. So I love that school. Also, the connection with nature. For example, when they teach math for high school. And they take him out. They were looking at a roof when I was there one day visiting. And they're measuring the angle of the inclination of the roof. And they said, we're going to... Take that angle, geometry, they're doing geometry like that, and physics in one session. And they said, what we're going to do is going to divert the water that's falling off the roof into a natural filtration system that we're going to build at the school. So we're going to put some stones, some moss, some pebbles, some dirt along the way from the drain coming from the roof so that it gets filtered before it goes back to groundwater using the... Wow. So this is what they're teaching them. So imagine what they're combining all together to do science and math practical this is amazing it's, so that's their school they were in until they were wow. like um and then now it started high school they moved to another school mm. so but my kids because they were in a steiner school and so everyone makes fun of steiner because they go steiner kids uh they're usually artsy yeah there's no they don't wear black at school they don't let the oh, kids wear black really? just color because that's a, that's a yeah that's terrible the they have beehives at the school they have chickens they what? They plant stuff uh, themselves, the kids uh, water the, the garden, they harvest when they know seasons. It's that very much in touch with earth, yeah. right? That's Steiner. So I was telling a friend of mine once, my kids are in Steiner school, and he goes, huh, don't expect them to be lawyers or doctors then. And I went, good. Good. We good. don't want that. <laughs> don't want that. Yeah. They want to be artists, they want to be farmers, do whatever you want, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> Something but, useful. But, but in Lebanon, it wasn't like this. It was well, like, no, uh, what are you going to do? You need a degree yeah. to what fall back on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's your plan, C, D, E, F, G? I know, I know. Maybe try J, K, L, M, N, O, P. So Steiner, there's a joke in Germany, they used to say, they say, what's the difference between a, like public school, private school, and Steiner? They say a public school, um, they give you a math problem. They say, a farmer picks 100 of ki kilos of apples a day. How many does he pick in a week? You go, 700. You go, well, well done. 100 times 7. But private school, they go, he picks 100 kilos of apples a day. But if it rains, he doesn't pick apples. They throw in a variable. Rain is the variable. It rained two days this week. How many kilos does he pick? You go, 500. Great. Great. So Steiner system, for example, they have a subject called eurythmy. <clears throat> eurythmy, they go, for example, like A, B. Each letter has a movement. So they actually, that's an actual field, but they teach it to the kids. Mm. So you can express yourself with 
you know, letters and all that, the oh. way you move. A, B, I think, I think there's like A or B is like this. The, the, the C is an open arm and mm. then closed. But uh, when it comes to the math problem for them, they go like, uh, so the Steiner kid, they go, a farmer picks 100 kilos of apples a day. Draw an apple and dance your name. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like it has nothing yeah, to do nothing with the assessment. Yeah. That's what they make fun oh, of. Okay. So because my kids were in Steiner school, the formative years are very balanced, meaning you can sit with them anywhere I take and people go, your kids can really have a conversation. That's amazing. We can talk to them. Yeah. So what do you class you go? I'm, I'm in year eight. I'm year seven. Yeah. Sure. So what do you like? I like this. What do you do at school? Well, my teacher does this. You go, that's a kid without ADD. Because yeah. there's no devices, but no one's used to that anymore. Wow. And so that's why you have to bloody, you pay the price. Like as a father and a, and a mother, we never, you know how easy it is? A kid goes, I'm bored. And you go, here's the phone. Of course, it's the, it's the, it's the easiest cop out. Uh, Gabor Mate in his book, The Myth of Normal, he says that women in Canada, because mm. that's where he's from, uh, there was a study that are giving the, mainly women because they're the carers at that age, uh, they're giving the newborns phones as they change their diapers so they can stay, st stay still. What? Yeah. And newborns? We're, we're, yeah, no, we're talking like six and seven months old. And they, they don't even a phone know what they're looking at. The stimulation, stimulation, and then so they can change the diaper. That's a real thing. It's a real thing, yeah. Oh, my goodness. So you go, this doomed. generation. Haven't you noticed clips online? If there's silence in them, sometimes they don't get as much views these days. Silence. Depends on the topic. What do you mean? So if I'm talking to you now in a podcast and they're going... So I went to the market today and they go, okay, interested? You go, it's so funny. There was this scroll, too much. There's too much silence. I can't wait. I'm not going to wait. You notice how uh, usually they're cutting out breaths. Whenever you watch a video, there's breaths are cut out. Uh -huh. yeah. Pay attention to it. Yours is a different form of comedy. It requires the, the silence as part of the joke. Yeah. But different. when they're watching content, breathing is cut. Quick. Have you noticed? Pay that's, attention well, to it. There's next a lot time. of jump cuts, yeah, for jump, sure. Jump, 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 jump. Yeah, yeah. They take out the breaths because as soon as they go, <gasps> people go, oh, scroll. Out of time. Scroll. Let I me mean, hear I'm every word it. at the same time. Yeah. I put a joke that's uh, 30 seconds long. It says average viewing 17 on the analytics. You go, yeah. Fall off at 17. It's, it's actually fair. pretty high, to be honest. Usually it's way shorter. It's way shorter. Yeah. Isn't it eight seconds or something. Yeah, yeah, something like that. That's insane, man. Yeah, so uh, that's that's concerning the newborns with phones. Who, yeah, what kind of you shouldn't even be parents. And if the, you're not able to, to hold the attention, to hold the attention of, of a the newborn, bonding of a the of bonding. The yeah, man, yeah, that really matters because when they get older, the, you're there's going to be a massive disconnect. Yeah, between the parent child dynamic and yeah. in terms of actually conversation. Yeah, it's like that would be terrifying, it's <laughs> devastating. I said to my son, and he was building Lego, beautiful. Fantastic. 10 years old building Lego at the time. <laughs> and I go, his name's Lucas. I go, Lucas, come. Food's ready. And he goes, I want to play to the end. Dad, let me, just want to play to the end. Finish the thing? I thought, play to the end. What a romantic. <laughs> Is there ever end with kids? I no. thought that's so sweet. I said, finish it. Okay. <laughs> and I'll, two minutes pass. So Lucas, uh, food's getting cold. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Five minutes later, I said to him, I've told you like three times, food's ready yeah, yeah. and you have to enjoy it warm right. and you haven't eaten. And he goes, yeah. I told you I want to finish the, the game. And I said, it's okay. You don't love me. You don't love me. Yeah. It's fine. 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 Just tell me now. And then he goes to me, <laughs> you should have seen him. He goes, I do love you. I said, oh man. Oh my I said, God. I said, listen, you have to understand something. I didn't say this to you just now. My mother said my that year. to you <laughs> through me. <laughs> Through me, yeah, that's the trauma, what happened. Bro. And I said, to I'm so, he goes, What? <laughs> like, and yeah, yeah. He said, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. Come eat, come, come, yeah. then finish. That trauma is not for you, bro. And I realized, Oh, oh, god, <laughs> I'm probably can, wow. Do you notice that yeah, what, yeah, what yeah. we say to kids? Like, oh, I know. Shit. that's so interesting because that's exactly how I would see it because yeah. that's exactly my mom, too. Yeah, yeah, always in my so ear. You don't love me, yeah. What do you mean? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. you're not gonna come, okay, fine. Yes, I guess you, you don't care about any of my efforts, yeah. That's exactly it. I wish I, I had died second. in the war. Yeah, yeah. If I had been dead, <laughs> I would be resting and you'd all be <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. you would all be relieved yeah, yeah, yeah. as well. I you know. know what that sentence is? It's it means, crazy. First of all, I'm a burden on all of you. Yeah, burden. So maybe I should just die. Yeah, maybe. And then the burden is gone. Yeah. How's for that? Sure. And then I would rest. 
Because life is suffering for me. It's so bad. The layers of guilt. So much guilt. My life is suffering. Let me just die. Yeah, all yeah. the rest. And I, then you'll all be happy. Yeah. You can finish whatever you're doing. I'll be gone. Doesn't matter. You can do whatever you want when I'm gone. That's exactly what my mom says. It's like, So like, you don't okay. know my worth. When I, when I, just, when when I, I die, then you'll yeah, know. Yeah, then you'll know. Worth. Yeah, exactly. It's like, I didn't, I, I didn't move a plate from this table to that table. I'm like, <laughs> you don't have to say that. I'll move yeah. it. Just give me two yeah. seconds. Right. Does your dad ever like? Did they ever say like, uh, bring me some water, but make it cool? Like, yeah, get it from yeah, the yeah. fridge, like, mix, it, like, mix like, it with the warm water and all that. Yeah, yeah he's like, like Velarm, which is Abdullah like, Salam, yeah. yeah, make it lukewarm before yeah, you bring yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, I'm coming and I'm bringing yeah, yeah. Like, water to them. I'm just serving. Perfect temperature. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I uh, was reading yesterday. Like, I've been writing some jokes recently. After festivals, I spend months. Where I can't write, I've been just doing so much. Yeah, you know, I have no inspiration, so yeah. I need to fill up on the world. Yeah, raising yeah. the kids, being Definitely. out in the supermarket, whatever it is, and the body is just absorbing, the mind is absorbing, and then one day it just all comes gushing, and I can write, you know, go, ah, oh, it's back. Yeah. But George Carlin once said, he goes, I don't pull at the world. He goes, I just, I wait, mm. and it'll it'll download on its own one day when yeah. it needs to. Don't pull. Don't don't. Some people go. How many writing sessions do you do per week? I go. I don't do writing sessions where I force myself to sit and write. Yeah, yeah. Maybe I should sometimes, but right. I go. It feels if it's not coming, mm. but sometimes it comes. All right, like two pages right. immediately. Right. So I was uh, reading yesterday. They say the first humanoid robot for home use is being released. And I wrote, uh, yeah. So what? it can help you with daily chores around the house. Oh, and all like that. an actual. Like it's going to be like sixteen thousand dollars for the robot. Jesus. And all that. Uh, it's like very eye robot kind of. End of time is And near. I wrote, uh, yeah, there's a Lebanese version where it'll do the housework while complaining that no one appreciates it. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one. It's 100%. That's perfect. It's 100%. 100% I said, that's that how that I make happen. my lamb. I could slow cook it. It's the Lebanese <laughs> lamb. You slow cook it and complain. Yeah, yeah. That no one. The key ingredient, complain. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I saw as well yesterday because it was like I'm getting AI feeds a lot. And they said there's a new AI powered vacuum cleaner. And that's so, such so an SNL mom. line. Yeah. You know, it's like, so they just released a new vacuum cleaner. But the slogan said, Nima, the vacuum cleaner that talks back. And I went, oh, buddy, you don't some know. Some jokes write themselves. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, if I wanted one that oh, talks buddy, back. Oh, buddy, I've had one for I years. I would have stayed married. You, know, you could go whatever path. You, you could want. go whatever path. You go, who's decided? Why well, don't want the vacuum cleaner yeah. to talk to me as well? No, I don't. Please don't talk to me. It's yeah. insane. That's yeah, funny, the, man. It's so yeah. similar, honestly. Yeah, it's so funny how yeah, yeah. The different lot cultures, of, but lot so of guilt. so much guilt. <laughs> so I don't but, give guilt to my kids. Yeah, how are they gonna survive? Uh, huh? uh, With being well balanced and emotionally stable, I, I think that matters more than anything else. To be honest, knowing how to communicate effectively as a, as a young child, I think is gonna be the number one thing that'll separate them from the rest of their generation growing up. I read so much uh, like uh, books about. Uh, Psychology. Consciousness psychology. Oh, okay, nice. And I say to the kids, uh, um, and I love Eckhart Tolle, he wrote The Power of mm. Now and all that. And he always, uh, he says in the beginning of his book, he goes, I was, uh, I woke up in dread one night in my, when I was 28 years old. I wanted to kill myself. That's what he says. And I thought, I just want to end this life. And he goes, then I had the moment of, who's doing the talking? Who just said that sentence? And then he realized that he could be separate from the self. And it was the ego, the self, mm -hmm. saying that stuff. And I yeah. could observe it. I could observe it. So I said that to my kids that uh, when you go like, I'm upset and all that, all you're saying is this programming on and on. This is going to be a horrible day. This is really bad. And then that triggers actions that attract that for you. It's about whatever you think. And now my kids say stuff like, you know, like uh, something annoyed me today and my mind was telling me. That's the line they use. Wow. At that age. That's so insane. My mind was telling me this. That's high IQ already. That's bloody. I go, I've, okay, I hopefully I can keep that going for wow. them to separate that. That's your mind telling you the story. Yeah. Live in the moment. Mm. My, my son told me a joke. He said, uh, <laughs> he said, because it was my birthday, and <clears throat> I was saying uh, the Lebanese way, I was joking with them. I said, ah, look at me in my 40s. Where has my life gone? It's you. You took my life force away. You sucked it all. My youth is gone because of you. And I'm hugging them and cuddling them. Yeah. And I said, there you go. All these years have passed. My, and then my son goes, I don't tell you a joke. I read in my book. I said, well, what's the joke? And he goes, don't worry about the past because it's happened and there's nothing you can do about it. I said, 
Yes. He goes, and don't worry about the future because it hasn't come yet. And don't worry about the present because I didn't get you one. Oh. And I said, that's that is good. hilarious. <laughs> that's and good, then he goes, man. yeah, it's in this book. I said, that's funny that you, you actually used it properly on my birthday. Good delivery, too. Yeah. He's, he's one of you, man. He's really one of you. Yeah, but he doesn't. If you say, that's so funny. He goes, oh. Oh, he gets shy? He doesn't want to be in the spotlight. Oh, he doesn't Very like funny it. boy. Doesn't want to be in the spotlight. Oh, interesting. Yeah. I go, that's actually the probably the best way. Because be, be, yeah. being in the spotlight, it's like, I want validation. Everyone, look it's at true. me. The fact that he doesn't mind. Mm. He can just tell me the joke and doesn't care about it. He's a, I go, then, okay, good. That's good. Very secure, stable kid. Yeah, hopefully. Unlike us growing up. I Probably I'm going to be giving them my own brand of trauma, by the way. Like I probably yeah. am doing something that's just For sure. not knowing. Well, it generationally it gets better and better, but you know, you still have a little bit that they might, they might see and yeah. they might latch on, but you know, but their generation, they're, they're going to be a fucking amazing. Yeah. All right. So that, that's the whole point though. Yeah. Every generation gets better. I say when I stepped on my mother's wet floor, I said, I said it on, um, on comedy up late in Melbourne, like a few years ago for, for channel nine, was it at the time? I say, <laughs> I stepped on her, she goes, what are you doing, fatty? I just mopped. And I go, I'm sorry, I didn't notice. And I go, typical Lebanese mother answer, goes, of course you didn't notice. Well, no, this is me. Yeah. Suddenly all the problems of the marriage are being dumped on my, like I cook, I clean, I wash. Does anyone <laughs> ever say thank you? Does anyone ever say thank you? No. I wish I had died in the war. <laughs> I'd be resting, but, oh my God, I stepped on the bloody floor, easy. Bro, <laughs> it's so, it's like, like, it's like a, it's like a playbook <laughs> for every Middle Eastern mom. I know that the passive. It's okay. No, no, it's okay. No, it's a, no, that's no okay. fine. No, no, no. No, you no, go. it's okay. Don't worry about it. Yeah, yeah fine. No, I do everything. You, you sit there. You do, do nothing. Everything. Okay. Yeah, Put fine. your feet up. Fine. You, I was a kid. Was, I had a memory the other day. I was watching TV, MTV, when I was a kid MTV. in Lebanon. Whenever we had electricity, which was rare, mm. and ka Kama Chameleon comes on. Kama, 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 Kama. Chameleon. Boy George. Yeah. Boy George. Yeah. And I'm looking at it, and my mom walks to the living room. I go. I go, mom, why is that man dressed like a woman? She goes, what are you watching? Turns it off, just go out, smacks yeah, yeah, me. Yeah. Go like on the head, like go, go play outside. I got hit. <laughs> for what? <laughs> was watching a guy <laughs> with makeup. <laughs> and like, what are you watching? It's your fault. Like, I didn't do it. I was just sitting, the TV yeah. just played this. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, that's a classic. Yeah, yeah. And that, that and um, feeling the guilt of um, actually sitting down and watching something without oh my doing God. something. Yeah, productive yeah I, i'm like my body tenses up if they like if I, I feel my dad walking around with my mom and they see me relaxing it's it's over it's yeah. over like wh oh wh why are you wh why oh, are you just sitting here oh, big guy yeah oh you, you boy, worked hard yeah. all day huh you know and we know my mom it, oh it's like it, it comes to the door if, if you're sitting down you know what i had yeah. to do today I yeah. had to go here. Then I had to go there. Yeah. I went to gas station. He said this to me. Then I had to go back yeah. into the car, back into the store, back into the car. They get this bag. Get that bag. I come here. I'm tired. <laughs> Did you ever, when they mopped, have to walk by the wall? No, yeah, like yeah, someone yeah, escaping yeah, from prison? Yeah, you know? yeah, for sure. Yeah. She's like, I, I'm, I, <laughs> like nah. walk by the wall. Like, yeah. Walking by the wall. It's like you put your foot on the thing. It's like, I mean, I don't time he's carried them all. Which is like, I just cleaned, bro. <laughs> and it was like t two hours ago. Yeah. I'm like, bro, where do you want me to go? Do you also like take the carpets on the balcony and smack it? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All that yeah, oh, that, yeah, yeah. That, yeah, I've done, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I once was saying to some female comedians in Sydney, I said, uh, Lebanon, I have a saying to say, women are like carpets. <laughs> they, they, all of them got offended before I finished the saying. Yeah, of course they did. And I said, I said, do you have to understand that this is uh, me making fun of that saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not so me women saying. like carpets. Every once in a while, you gotta take it out and give it a good smack in front of everyone. You go, whoa, because that's what we do the carpets and yeah, yeah, you have before to. we pack them or just before yeah, we put yeah, them yeah. in. And I'm going, <laughs> it's abuse. It's a fun. and and those it's, who of course get it, they laugh at it. How yeah, yeah. absurd it is. I know. But usually people get offended on behalf of the others. Oh fuck, that's a offended. classic, especially here in Australia. You know what I've noticed because I've done. Comedy in Canada, sensitive, obviously. Yeah. And, Melbourne and is more sensitive than Sydney. Though. Oh my god, Melbourne is crazy. <laughs> you, I mean, like you've performed in the states, obviously, right? No, no, no you haven't. I've never, no, no, not even Canada. No. Oh, okay. Well, so from my experience, I always say this from my perspective: coming to Australia and doing comedy here, and gen anywhere you go, really, but mostly Melbourne and Sydney, actually, to to a certain extent, the audiences are very scared or hesitant to laugh at certain things. Because they're yeah. sensitive about everything. Yeah, they have to analyze it first. 
Yeah. And see, yeah. is it offensive before I <laughs> yeah. commit are to the laugh? Are they laughing? Or? Are they laughing? Is everything... Uh, am, I, am I okay? And then they... When they get it, if, especially if it's a little convoluted joke that you've written, and they unpack it, they understand it, especially in Melbourne, I feel they go, like, ha, ha, ha. They clap, ha, ha, they go, ha. I got that. Right. And the clap is for them, not for you. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm smart. I got that one. They didn't even laugh. They just... A guy introduced me two weeks ago. Uh, go, okay, guys, ready for your final act? Uh, listen, some comedy is, is just, like, dark. Uh, some comedy is light. I want everyone just to be open. And have a good night. Yeah, was, uh, like, come on, all the energy for. I got on stage. I said, "Why was there a disclaimer before you? Before came on? I get on? Yeah, really. You, when you introduced in me in, in Sydney here. Oh, in Sydney. <laughs> he said what? some comedy is dark, and I said, "What are you? Ta- I said, Why would you? I like comedy. I don't think it's dark. Yeah. Do you want to hear dark comedy? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <clears throat> and the audience went, "Yeah, like this." <laughs> and then I said, "I have dark uh, jokes." Not as dark as these two, the two black people in the front. Oh my God. And yeah. they lost it. They cracked up. They were fist bumping me. The white people went, <gasps> Yeah, right? So the, the owner said, right? I have dark, not as dark as these two. <laughs> They're laughing. They followed me on Instagram. Yeah, I want to yeah. come to your show. Of course. But the white people, like, nothing. Mm-mm. Right. Mm-mm. Like half of them laughed. The but immigrants, the immigrant white kind of laughed. Right. But They're the nervous same. laughs, Mm-mm. though. Like, <laughs> right. I said that's how we should kick it off. And that's what I was introduced as. Like, why, bro? That's see, that's a that's the epitome of my experience here. Yeah, and I tell them all the time. Yeah, it's because I do a lot of racial stuff too. Most of my com- comedy is just yeah. racial, ethnic jokes, or whatever cultural jokes. I do the same thing. I make fun of Asian people or like a black guy or whatever Indian dude. Those guys are loving it. Yeah, everyone else who's, who's white, unfortunately, and I hate to say it because. I think white white people are great too. They have, you know, yeah, they're they're great people. Yeah, but for some reason they're so worried when it comes to the race stuff, I which I get, I get, I guess you know with the racism here in Australia, it's a big thing, whatever. But but still, but I mean, it's the, them being racist. I yeah, it's not the, me. I don't yeah. know why the fuck are you <laughs> making me feel like at, shit. Um, Happy Endings Comedy Club. Uh, yeah, King's Cross. actually a good place. It's yeah, one it's, of my favorite fu- clubs here. It's a fun here. room. It's one of my favorite rooms here. And the guy in the front was uh, Indian. So where are you from? <clears throat> he goes, Mumbai. I said, that guy's from Mumbai. You know each other? Yeah. I mean, cool. yeah. the idea of them knowing each other in Mumbai. It's impossible. And then he goes, to, I said, no, I like Mumbai. My IT support guy is there. Although you guys are full of shit. It's always like, I call. And, uh, and he goes, uh, Hello, this is James. Uh, how can I help you? I go, you're not James. <laughs> you're not James. Yeah. And he goes, oh, it's beautiful weather. We have to. I go, you're not here. I know you're not here. I yeah, know you're yeah, in yeah. India. Right. Shut up, Ranjit. Yeah. Just fix my connection. Yeah, yeah. And the Indian guy is laughing so hard. Mm-hmm. And his friend. And uh, and actually, most of the room was like, but then the, some white people was like, shut up, Ranjit. And just do your job. I know you're in India. Don't fake like you know what my weather is like because you have it in front of you. I know you're not in Australia. <laughs> You're James. Yeah. <laughs> Shut up, yeah. James. So, and that's not racism. This is an observation. Yeah. And he's laughing, but you need that in an order. Like I had once a joke. Uh, we had a guy in a wheelchair in the front row, and everyone was mm. like dealing with kids' gloves. You know? Oh yeah, a, they're very very careful, meticulous. Yeah. So I'm saying that how I was swimming in the pool, and I can do one lap, which is not even one lap. You go from one side to the other, and I rest. <laughs> then I swim back, and I rest, and I get very familiar with my wall, and I know my wall. Like, oh, look, I haven't fixed this chip yet. Like, I'm very familiar with it. Yeah. But next to me, for 15 minutes, there's this girl, 13 years old, going, <laughs> she hasn't stopped. She has not stopped. What do you mean? Talking or? In the lane next to me, swimming. Oh, sorry. Back forth, yeah. back forth, yeah. back. And I'm right. standing, leaning on my wall, like panting, yeah, and looking yeah. at her. And then she, I thought, when she gets to me, when she turns, I'm going to race her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do too. You do that too? Uh, all the time. I thought, I'm going to race her. So I race that girl. I give it all I've got. <laughs> And I'm, I go, it was so majestic. Everyone was looking at me because the water splashing was so powerful. Yeah, you know, just, I have no technique, right? <laughs> and I get, and I grab the wall and I look, and she's two meters behind me. And I'm going, oh, just, yeah. just in your face. Like, I won, I won. <laughs> and I, then I hear a voice, someone's talking to this girl. And I look up, because I'm leaning now on the wall. I'm, I look up and I, go, and I remove my mask and snorkel. Huh? <laughs> this is when people start like the. Snorkel. <laughs> you had a snorkel. That's hilarious. I go and I look, and it's her mom waiting for her with a wheelchair. Oh, and that happened. That I swear. So I'm telling the story, oh, and, uh, and then everyone in the room looked at the guy in the wheelchair because I mentioned oh, that's wheelchair. Hilarious. And I said, I thought, oh no, oh no, that poor girl, she's disabled, and I've been doing all that. I go, oh my god, oh no, I feel horrible. <laughs> oh no, I I barely won. 
Like, <laughs> and then like it dawns on me that I barely, I thought I yeah, barely yeah, beat yeah. a 13 year old disabled girl who didn't know I was racing her, by the even way. Even worse. Even worse. And then she grabs the rails and limps off and gets off because her mom called her. I go, oh, she's not. That's so good. <laughs> she has her whole life ahead of yeah, her. That's yeah. pretty good. I go, it turned <laughs> out her mom comes over every day um, with her to the pool to do rehab. And every day she comes and drops her off at the pool. And I went to look at the guy right in there. I said, I don't mean drops her oh, off. Oh, that's so And good. I grabbed the chair like, yeah, yeah, I, said, yeah. I don't mean drops her off. And he's going, ah, and he's just yeah, yeah. laughing. And Love then it. everyone laughed, but everyone was so tense. Oh yeah, you could tell. My God. And then I go, but that just, if you face him and you look in front of you and go, this, yeah. is, this joke is for you. Yeah. This is for you. You uh, know, I'm not like that kind of person. Right. And if this is not what comedy is about, to address those topics. I don't mean drops her off. Yeah. And he's laughing. And then right. I say, and then go look at her. I have a, I have a 13 year old and the, I can relate. She has, <laughs> look at you. Good for you. I have the whole <laughs> life. And then I realize that her mom, she and her mom were both looking at me. And then I realize I'm a man in my 40s looking at a 13 year old girl. <laughs> just nodding and smiling. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then mom goes, what? What? No, what are you kind of, some kind of creep? Like, what, what, what's happening? She's going, why are you smiling? I go, no, no. I'm, I thought she was disabled. Yeah, yeah, I just yeah, yeah. wanted to know. <laughs> just That's why I was laughing. A hole. <laughs> the whole idea of if you don't tackle these topics, man. Oh man, that's f- that's so good though. <laughs> yes, but that that's that's the whole point of it all. Yeah, and uh, actually, that's smart, man. Especially if you're looking into the guy's eyes too. Yeah, because that shows that you're aware, very aware of right, it. which yeah. is the whole purpose of doing stand-up is having self-awareness yeah and best of all this guy feels included yeah also feels treated like everyone, everyone else. else yeah it's not like we're gonna treat you with kids gloves because no. you have a disability or less like i love i have a friend uh, you might have met him he's a comedian um uh, iman he's uh he's a little mm. person he's like midget midget <laughs> Midget. Midget. And I was telling him that I, I'm writing something and I want him to be part of it. And like uh, how I'm be walking down the street and the camera pans to him. Like I'm talking, we, we represent everyone here. And I pan and I turn and he goes, and then the camera pans down. I go, no, it doesn't. And he goes, well, then why am I in this? I said, in episode two, it starts over saying, when am I going to get paid for that ad that I did for you? I go, oh. that you realize he was in the ad, but the camera never oh. panned to him. <laughs> So I was just telling him that I have yeah, this idea yeah. and he goes, I can get physical. Then I said to him, isn't it amazing? Anyone works with midgets or little people and they go like, we th- you th- want to throw them across the floor and you go, don't do that to them. Cause, and everyone says the same thing. They go, oh, no, no, they love it. Yeah, yeah. They love yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> they want to be thrown. Yeah, into, yeah they love it. Yeah. They, what do you mean they love it? Like yeah. that breed of yeah. people. Yeah. Love, you know how bad to say it? Like I they know. love it. And he's laughing. Right. But the comedians around us, like sitting, go, ah, right. they love it. They go, yeah, yeah. Friday, it's a bit. I don't know. About this that, uh, I'm going, Mark Twain once said it, man, comedy is in the darkness. That's where, yeah. That's where it is. It's in the trenches. It's the bloody trenches. But how many comedians take you to the darkness and leave you there? Like mm. I go like I True. broke up with my girlfriend, she was cheating on me in the KFC toilet or something. Mm. And you go, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, oh, oh, you don't have a joke about this. It's a yeah, this is uh, okay, actually that's pretty cool. traumatized, <laughs> and that's it. There's no comedic relief. Thank nothing, you. Nothing. Thank you so much. <laughs> You're supposed to, uh, you know, do something. Who, who are your inspirations in comedy? George Carlin for me. Yeah, you mentioned him a few times. Yeah. Oh, he's the best. He is. He's great. It's the best because uh, I compare myself now seven years into him after 40 years, which is not a oh. good comparison. If you would love your hero, there are amazing writers like John Mulaney. You have Tina Fey is a mm, great writer. Good. Great yeah. writer. You go, oh my yeah. God. So, see, I like women writers too. <laughs> <laughs> but No misogyny here. No misogyny here. <laughs> but uh, George Carlin, that's the thing. Uh, Tom Waits, you know Tom Waits? The, okay, he's, no. a, he's a musician. He's unbelievable. Musician, Probably the right? best uh, poet oh, or poet. lyricist, uh, like an, as in writer, song oh, okay. writer, songwriter in existence, I believe. Mm. But he said, we find our voice by imitating our heroes badly. Mm. You have to imitate them badly in the beginning because you don't, you haven't achieved that level of skill yet. It took him decades for that, and you're starting going, yeah. I want to be like Norm MacDonald, amazing storyteller and writer and all that. Mm-hmm. And you go, but you're not, it's going to take you a long time, and then you'll find your own voice, and you'll become a mix of all your mm-hmm. influencers. But uh, Carlin, MacDonald, 
I mean, there are Americans, but Egyptian comedy as well. The timing on Egyptian. Who? Adil Imam was that when I was growing up. He had a play, like he would do a play. Uh, so one play is called Shahad Mashaf Shahaga. It means a witness who's seen who's seen nothing. Mm-hmm. The pol- he comes one day, finds the police at his apartment because the belly dancer on the floor above him got killed. And they want to see if he's a witness, if he saw the guy. And he didn't. But they're trying, they caught the guy, but they want him to wit- to testify. And they're saying, uh, didn't you see it? So the whole play ran for 10 years in Egypt. Oh, wow. It's a comedy. Hilarious. We're talking hilarious. He goes, uh, <laughs> he goes I did go one day uh, to give her the electricity bill. And I knocked on the door, then the door opened. And there was, there was a very big man in front of me at the door. They go, yeah, yeah, what did he look like? What did you see? Because that's the guy they caught, right? And uh. they go, and he goes, I, I don't remember much. He goes, what was he wearing? Um, and he goes, uh, socks. And he goes, what else? They go, he goes, like, that, that's what he was wearing. So she, was so, so she basically would bring men over to her place. She was a sex, uh, yeah, yeah. sex worker yeah. and a belly dancer because he was wearing socks. And he goes, <laughs> uh, can you describe more? He goes, yeah, it was green with like an elastic top. He goes, not the socks. Can you describe oh more God. about them? So the timing, the okay. whole missing for me, I don't know. And oh, okay. they, they're being in the mud mm. where it's just filthy and yeah, messy yeah, and yeah. Uh, there's ambiguity. Yeah. He was a king of that. Like he's still, wow. he's still alive. What's his name? Adil Imam. Adil? Adil. Adil. And surname is Imam. Imam. Oh, Adil Imam. Adil okay. Imam. Yeah. So he was. So Egyptians are probably the funniest people in the Middle East. Mm, in my you think opinion. so? I think so. Interesting. Funny. Wait, is, is, like, is Basim Yusuf? From? He's Egyptian. He's Egyptian. Oh, yeah. okay. Okay. And what about Nemer? Nemer is Lebanese. Nemer Lebanese. And he and I went to the same school, Nemer. Oh, wow. Really? Same school. I was two years uh, older than him in that school. Oh, and you didn't know? We had know. the same teachers and everything. You had no, no. When he came here, I, when I met him in person, you had no go, idea. Where are you from? I said, there, I studied this school. No way. I was talking, what happened to Mr. <laughs> that guy? And he goes, yeah. oh, oh, he had a car accident. He's in a wheelchair now. What? Or that happened. I go, no way. So we just wow. headed off like. What are the chances of that? Unbelievable. I've had an insane year and like uh, Steve Hughes do you know Steve Hughes Australian yeah, yeah 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 I saw him he, a couple he, times yeah. uh, brilliant Steve he's really funny he's, he's great Steve he's with, the, with the he used to have tall a ponytail guy. Tall, tall guy, guy. Yeah, 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 tall yeah. yeah he's good yeah he he had a great joke at the Apollo when I was a big fan mm. of his so this year I, I opened for Nimr uh, yeah. Basim Yusuf Jim yeah. Jeffries Steve Hughes this year has been a wonderful and then just all these people in one year Omid Jalili too and it's Omid Jalili you and I yeah. 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 <laughs> mashallah <laughs> yeah it's so good it's so good like, I, I love that guy as well yeah he's great it's funny because the two weeks before I was watching The Mummy again and he's in it yeah yeah yeah. yeah have you uh, seen Over the Hedge the animated no. show yeah he's the Persian cat in that in that movie oh really it's about like uh, animals jumping over a hedge like going into deep plot deep plot <laughs> very like <laughs> <laughs> is this how you're gonna summarize sell the movie hey Omid we have a movie for you what's it about it's about animals jumping overhead I'm in <laughs> they go into like the neighborhoods uh, okay. they're from the wild but they go into like the the it's suburban suburbans yeah, yeah. Uh, suburban areas um, yeah. and then he's like the suburban animal but the wild animals oh, they, they that's a they, good okay, that's a nice, very yeah. good plot actually that's really good yeah I like that actually. it's actually pretty funny I'm Doing a terrible job of playing, <laughs> sure, but, sure. but um, but anyway, yeah, so. yeah. So Ovid is great. Uh, Steve Hughes had a joke at the Apollo that he said, uh, "He goes, I'm from Australia. I'm gonna butcher this." Uh, uh, and he goes, uh, "In Australia, we don't have much. We have uh, uh, football and racism. That's our national." He goes, "I was never good at either of those. I didn't know what to kick." <laughs> right? <laughs> <Here you go. laughs> What a great line! What a great line! And I love one-liners as well. Like in yeah. Sydney, you get inspired. Who do you? Who inspires you? Who do you like? Uh, well, my first inspiration was Russell Peters. Obviously, you know we're we're also from the same area of back home in Canada. Okay, yeah, like, like diff- different oh, city, man. but somebody gonna get hurt yeah. real bad. That yeah, was exactly. iconic. That like, line. Everyone knew that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So he was he was definitely my, the first one. Um, that that whole special, I remember watching it. The first one that blew mesmerizing. Up, right? Mesmer- yeah. was, I I was a kid and I was like, "What the fuck? This guy's just like an Indian guy talking about Chinese people on stage. Like this is crazy." Yeah. I knew all the lines from that uh, every special single line. Of his. It's my back hurts and all that stuff. Yeah, like, who gets Indian slaves to Africa? Yeah, you know, yeah. who gets? 
<laughs> Indian slaves, remember that? Like it's just saying those Bro, topics. There's so many, so many great jokes, man. Um, obviously the yeah, somebody gonna get hurt. The whole um, Chinese mall, the bargain deal one. There's so many. You like this commentary on yeah, on, on his his ethnic background, for example, and that's you go this so it's such a rich area to to explore. Oh yeah, yeah. Of course, it's never ending. No, well, also he opened up the doors for people like me, who or you or anyone really yeah, who, yeah. who does ethnic jokes. Pretty much, he made it mainstream, in my yeah, opinion. Yeah, he did. Right, even though it was, it was more Indian for him, but then he obviously touched on other cultures. I was like, oh, wow, like, it's possible someone like him, who's not white, can do jokes it. like that. Yeah. To and so it was like, m- inspired a whole generation of comedians. And his crowd work is great. Oh, man, his crowd work is master class. Yeah. We always say, like, and I was lucky to work with him, too, and fucking unreal. Right. This is great. It's crazy. It's, a, it's, like a, it's like a full circle moment, you know? Yeah. I'm sure you've had that too with with Basim Yusef and yeah. all these other guys, right? It's like this is it, it, you never think it would happen until it happens. You're like, oh shit! Like I did this. Yeah, you know? this is happening. It's yeah. actually it's such a good feeling, right? Yeah. But um, yeah, man, he was definitely one of my first ones, and then um, you know along the way, obviously, you know Kevin Hart, uh, someone like him, I look up to just because he's just like a that mogul. Energy of energy. his, yeah, just emulating that energy. Just be yourself. Yeah, and keep smiling, and people just want to be in your presence uh, it. because he's loving what he's saying. And it's so That's enticing. Great. Enticing. It's enticing. It's it's, it's engaging. It's very engaging. Very, engaging, very yeah. physical, right? But also, he taught me uh, more so just about everything, not just stand up itself. He's a he's a, his his business mindset. Acumen, yeah. Acumen, yeah. Like uh, you know, he, he's, he's a, a is he a billionaire yet? Probably. He's probably the closest as a comedian. I mean, Jerry Seinfeld's the first billionaire, I think. Right? Yeah. I think yeah. Jerry. I don't talk about him anymore, Jerry. Oh yeah. I just ignore him. Why? Because he took his uh, wife and kids to a training camp in Israel where they shot all these mock-up Palestinians and they trained. Oh, shit. Yeah, and he's like pro. Oh, sep- October 7th. Don't worry oh, about it. Oh, damn. So he go, Jerry, Jerry, oh, Jerry. You yeah, are my yeah. inspiration why I don't swear on my stand-up. Oh, yeah. Because clean he was always yeah. clean I know, clean, yeah, that. clean cut, yeah. So I started swearing. Yeah. After, after, after <laughs> recently. You're like, you know what? You know, you know what? Stuff. Fuck it. <laughs> Fudge it. Uh, 950 million dollars? <laughs> <laughs> Dinero. It's like how much does a person rupees. need? Rupees. Rupees. Be Larry. Huh? Be Larry. Larry would be Larry, oh, Larry David. David. Yeah. Well, stand up. Ah, stand up. I mean, he was at some point. Yeah, but not full. Yeah, that's crazy. Kevin Hart, there you go. There he is. That's fucking well deserved, man. Well, that's deserved. crazy, bro. One of my favorites, Sarah Silverman. Oh yeah, she's an OG. Amazing. Amazing comedian. What a great uh, writer. Know. What a yeah, great, writer. great writer. And her style and style. delivery. Very unique. Very inspirational. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Norm um, MacDonald, man. Norm is a, I, I, also a legend, OG. Definitely. Rest in peace. Um, but um, yeah, man. No, those are definitely the inspirations. And it, it's so cool being able to work with these people along the way, right? It's like, the what, what's better than that? Man, Take, take Jim Jeffries, okay? Yeah, Jim Jeffries. You fucking opened I, for Jim I Jeffries. I opened for him two weeks ago at the ICC in front of 8,000 people. Holy now, shit. Now, Jim, I've, this is my sixth time opening for him. Yeah. Like, and he, but uh, he's, he's reclusive. Like he, uh, basically, he talks to, to comedians usually and all that. I was about to get on. I'm the, but I'm the first one to be on stage. Oh, and he goes, up. And he goes, uh, hey, Fadi, you know, openers in a stage like this, they forget their lines often. <laughs> forget their jokes. That's crazy. And I, I said, just no, just stop it. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And then my, my friend, another comedian, it goes to me, uh, he's right. I said, don't tell him he's right. Don't feed him that because he already thinks it's fun. Don't do this to me, Jim. Just, uh. yeah. And he goes, and they trip. Nice. They trip on cables. You watch out there, watch your step. And I said, just, and so I turned him and I, and I kind of nudged him. I said, just, just go away. Go away. I'm about to go on. Yeah. They're about to announce me. And then he comes back, goes, don't worry. You're not going to forget your lines, Fatty. You haven't written anything new in six years. I go, oh just leave me God. alone. You just man. won't stop. <laughs> and then they go, welcome stage, Fatty. Oh, my God. And then I got off and they just spack him. Yeah. I go, yeah, well done. Well, nice job, nice job. I go, okay, maybe that's a good phase with him. He's roasting me. Yeah, you know, like, yeah, That's yeah. a good... Uh... You know what? That's It's so funny because <laughs> it's actually... It's better that way because then you know that person trusts you. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. they respect you. Yeah. Which is a, such such a great feeling because I had the same thing happen to me with Russell. I was first time opening for him. What did he say? And uh, I was like, "Hey, man, it was a little bit different." But I was like, y- "Yo, you have any advice?" Uh, first time on a stage, it was in front of uh, nine thousand people. 
in a stadium, a hockey stadium, like in 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 Canada. Um, do you have any advice, man? It's my first time doing. Uh, before this was four hundred people max for me. Yeah, nine thousand. And then he just looked at me. He's like, "Just don't bomb, man." <laughs> he's like, "Just don't bomb." All right. And I was That's like, good. "Oh, okay. It's like, thanks, man." <laughs> All, all they want is that you don't bomb. That's, yeah, it doesn't have to be a killer. No, no. Just do your course. set. That's all That's they it. want. Don't Make sure bo- set, don't set bomb. the tone. Don't be shit. That's it. Because then you do shit, you're never going to be coming back. Do you know when Trevor Noah opened for Chappelle? What he's uh, that story? Have you seen him say uh, that story? Maybe I think. Oh maybe. man, no. What was because it? Because I was afraid of silence a lot as a comedian. Yeah. Well, who who isn't? <laughs> because well, even when I tell a story, I would rush it because yeah, I just yeah. want to get to the punchline because people are waiting. This is a comedy show. Yep. And he said he was opening for Chappelle and before he got his own show, Trevor Noah. Oh, this is before that. Before that. Yeah, he's yeah. saying, uh, he goes, how's it going? He goes, I'm, to be honest, uh, Dave, I'm pretty nervous opening for you here. Like, I know I'm funny, but I don't know if I, and Chappelle goes to him, you're not here because you're funny. And he goes, I can go get a hundred funny motherfuckers to open for me right now. Mm. You're here because you're interesting. And oh. when you speak... People listen. Mm. And he goes, that moment, Trevor Noah tells that story, it changed for him that as long as they're listening, they don't have to be like, uh, as long as yeah. you're telling them something and captivating them, and they go, wow, that's interesting. Not yeah. everything has to be punchline, 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 killer, killer yeah. set. And yeah. that changed the way he thought about comedy. And I go, shit, that's so... <laughs> and, that, and this is where you learn from others. This is what's important to mm. sit and like say, watch the headliners. When you're oh, in a show and there's a headliner, man. you see a comedian do a set and leave. Like you just started stand up. I hate that. Le- why are you leaving? Watch, watch yeah. the headliner. Where you learn, learn something. something bro. Even if you don't agree with his comedy, maybe his crowd mm. work will kick in. Maybe he'll say a very well worded sent like a line or a, st- or or a, a joke. stage presence. Stage Simple. presence, you know. Anything. Delivery. Timing. Yeah. Scanning the room. Yeah. Timing. Timing. <laughs> That That's is so stupid. That just give me chills, bro. The fuck, the Chappelle thing. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, it's true. What yeah. I I pride myself into is is even if I'm not the funniest guy in the room, at least I worked hard at to be selling in the room, this. You mean? Well, being in the room, yeah, being yeah. present, and selling this material. Yeah, like it's the best material I, I've I've ever said because that's something Lachlan, who is Russell Peters' opener on yeah. the tour, that first time I opened for Russell. Uh, I was just about to go on stage and I was nervous and I was like, hey, I don't know what material I should do. And then he was like, yeah, you're overthinking it too much. What your, your job is to go out there and sell your jokes to these people. Like it's the best thing they've ever heard. Yeah. That's, that's the yeah, only yeah. thing you need to worry about. You have about. to believe in your you have own to believe in yourself Because if you're not believing it, how are they going to believe you? If you don't back yourself, who's going to back you? That's it. Simple as that. And ever yeah. since that day, I've had that right top of my mind every time I go on stage. I'm like... That's he's right. I have to just do the best. I I might as well. I'm already here. Why would I hold back? I'm reading a book now called The Courage to Be Disliked. No. It's a Japanese book. It's good. I translated to English. I I thought should I learn Japanese then read it now. <laughs> but uh, that because we we how often like we care about we are doing a gig and some person sitting in the front with arms crossed. Oh, love it. Love you it. know, and everyone's <laughs> laughing. Why? Aren't, why? What's this guy? Yeah, yeah. He's not close off. And so when you release the whole. Everyone has to like me. Mm, that too. Oh my god! Yeah. Because I don't. I have so many ideas for clips yeah. uh, that I want to do, and I thought, oh, how will it be perceived if I do a clip like that? Or that I have to just get over. If I feel like doing it, I go. But it's not stand up. But who said my account, for example, online should be just stand up? It's whatever I think is funny. Just post it. Create content, but not for the sake. Oh, I have a schedule. I have to hit. If I don't believe in it, I'm mm. not gonna put it up. Well, so it's because it won't a, translate, and, and 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 people will feel it. Yeah, and exactly. Because especially at a live show too, people humans are very quick to to realize if you're being authentic or not. Yeah, and that's something else too. I really try to like to to, to hone for myself when I go on stage. I'm like, uh, let me just be myself. Yeah, at, at least I know I went out there and I was myself. I wasn't trying to be anyone else. And the people who do love it, they love it. If they don't. Say la vie. Patrice O'Neill once said, because comedy is not about everyone being everyone happy, making everyone happy and laughing. He goes, comedy is about 50 people laughing and 50 people horrified. <laughs> that's, that's what he said. Yeah. <laughs> that's really funny. The well, way putting it. That, yeah. That's just how it is. Yeah, you can't, you're not going to please all of them. You can't. It's, it's, it's physically impossible. Even Chappelle. You think about the goats, right? Yeah. 
They're not pleasing everyone. So yeah. many people hate him. So many people I hate Kevin Hart. I watched him at the Kudos Bank Arena. Great show. Where? Kudos Bank Arena. Is in, that in Home Bush in Sydney. Okay. It was 18,000 people watching. 18,000. Chappelle, Chappelle that Jesus night. Jesus Christ. That's so many people. The following week, I watched John Mulaney at oh, Kudos Bank too. Arena in front of maybe 9,000. Yeah. It wasn't like as big, but 9,000. Yeah. I enjoyed John Mulaney more than Chappelle. Really? Why? He's a better writer. Than Chappelle? Than Chappelle. Well, in what way? Oh, and this is all I can tell you. Structure, jokes, linking, callbacks, all that. Chappelle is power. Absolute, like, punch. Like, he would tell you a, a joke and it goes to your core. Mm. And it would probably change the way you think. He's that capable of yeah. that. But from a writing perspective, I'm just saying who's funnier, oh, okay, okay. who's better writer. Yeah, yeah. Because he works so much on Saturday Night Live, mm. uh, John Punchy, Mulaney yeah. and all that. Yeah, it's like a long, long it's like you looking at, it's like Ronaldo and Messi. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. I don't know what it is, but it's the, the fabric of how he, I would say Chappelle is Messi. It's pure raw, like he's him. He's meant stage to presence. be that person. He's meant to be, it's, meant him. To, it's yeah, him. It's him. He's him, yeah. Whereas uh, you, the other one, uh, Mulaney, you're he's seeing the work. You're seeing the star. Oh, look right. at that. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. How he connected these two jokes through a joke. Mm. And then, then that had a callback to it. Mm. And I'm looking at structures, like you're looking at the matrix, at the code with Mulaney. Yeah. yeah I loved it. Okay. But I didn't say I, like, I laughed more with Mulaney and all that, but I thought, oh, I can understand, I can do that. Because I can't do Chappelle. No, no one can. <laughs> but if I understand the structure of Mulaney, he's right. such possible. a good writer that I go, oh, I can, yeah. 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 Interesting. Sebastian Maniscalco is oh a very good God. writer. Uh, yo, it's, it's, it's wild. He, I love he, him. He's, he's one of my favorites too. Yeah. yeah. You know his first show, what he wrote it about? I inspired me to write my own show in a similar way. Which one? He the, and his Arden? wife are going on to a, a house party. Yeah, yeah. And on the way there, what they're having, talking about in the car, and he digresses, talks about his wife's family. We arrive at the party, and she goes, you know, he's a stay-at-home dad, and he's going, okay. <laughs> he's going to now reverse the car and go back. <laughs> he goes, they come to the door as a couple. That bothered me straight away. And they go, take off your shoes. Take off your shoes. Yeah. We have white car. Why do you have white carpet? Back in my house. And suddenly now he's telling you the whole story. And then he would go out of that scenario, explain his culture. Yeah, yeah. And how that yeah. worked. And then he would go back to the story. So I get in there. Yeah. They have watermelon balls. Right. <clears throat> my grandfather would go out with a machete. He goes, <laughs> the hair sweating on his nipples yeah, as he yeah. came with the watermelon. They would mm -hmm. slicing with a machete. Mm -hmm. And so again, talks about that goes back story, but he's telling you all within the context it's of a house party. Yeah, he's invited to what they're serving, the conversation on the way, and all uh. that because that's great writing. You see it what is. I mean by that? So yeah, re I would say rewatch that from True. that perspective, and you go, "Wow, that's beautiful way to write a show to link the ideas together." And man, I, you know, I because because my thing is some of the things if you if you really uh, listen to what he's saying. Without the physicality, it's not that funny. Yeah, it's but him. the combination of the writing with the physicality is yeah. is master. That's what made him just well. Yeah, <clears throat> it's his voice. It's perfect. Yeah, it's him. It's so good. Yeah, but I, so it's funny you mention that because I intuitively also have thought that many times for myself. Just inspired inspired by by Sebastian, the way he 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 starts off with a line. He says something and then he diverts into yeah. something else for like a whole bit on his own. Yeah. And then it goes back to the same story. And I'm like, oh, how do I do that? Yeah. Right? He's he's really good at doing that. Yeah. I would I still to this day, I don't jump from topic to topic. Uh, by the way, I like to travel. No, if I was talking about something else, I have to put a joke in the middle that links the travel topic segue with the segue. old one. And that has to be a joke. In my head it's oh, always been really? like this. I make it very difficult for myself, but I love it. What you're like saying I, it's harder for you to, to do that? It's or? harder to do. Like I would say, uh, um, I want to talk about my marriage, but I'm saying I'm single, and I had this phase where I said, and that's it, I give up. I want to buy a sex robot, and that's it, I'm going to buy a sex robot. But but then Elon Musk, I saw an interview, is saying AI is going to become self-aware. <laughs> so when I thought it becomes self-aware, then it's just a matter of time for my sex robot leaves me, right? <laughs> I'll go wake up one day. She's gone, taking all the charges with her. <laughs> the you chargers. Know, left me a note like I left because being with you is draining. Oh, I, I took the bad chargers. That's nice. And then I want to talk about my marriage. I said, uh, speaking of sex robots, my ex was German. <laughs> that line took me probably like until I got that. 
Uh, so I was mad. It's funnier than saying, yeah, so my ex-wife and I, no. Speaking of sex robot, she was German. Like, how yeah. do Germans have sex? Suddenly it's a, a, a life of its own. It takes a bit more effort, but right. it's beautiful little. Then you have like, mm. uh, like it's a bridge and you're building all this support along the way, you know, and yeah. when you're writing. Yeah. It's, it's loving. Uh, like a lovely, I'm saying. It's great. Uh, has there been any moments for you where you, you got, you've gotten to the point where you got so discouraged in comedy that you thought about quitting? Once in Melbourne. Yeah, when I did my first Melbourne Comedy Festival. When was this? Three years ago or two years ago? No, three years ago. Yes, not last year, the one before it. It was the first time I do it. And I had uh, 28 ticket sales, which for me was great at the time. And there are only six people in the room. And I've started my show and they're not laughing. An Asian couple in the front, a guy and his wife in their late 50s. Go, why are they here? Like, I thought, I'm not the demographic. I don't know what, yeah. like what they saw. I'm not even, I don't talk anything to do with China and all that. Because I asked them, you're from, from China and all that. So they're immigrants as well. So English wasn't oh, their first language. Damn. So already two out of the six. Already so rough. Where are the others? Yeah. So I'm 20 minutes in. I've established the, everything that's going to build the show on. Four, six people arrive. And they said, we've been waiting for 20 minutes down there. We went to the wrong level. We've been just sitting in the wrong theater. Oh my God. So they come in, and 34 minutes in, I get these, like, 11 guys. No way. And uh, so sorry, the, there was a Save the Refugees demonstration, which clogged up the entire street in Melbourne. Oh, my stopped God. Stopped the tram, and the guy goes to me, there was no park, but, there was no park, but. There's no parking, but. He ends the sentence with but. They're all 18 and 19 years old, uh, a lot of Lebanese and, like, maybe three Sudanese. Yeah. They walk in, now it's been 38 minutes. That was just 20 minutes left in the show, 17. And then they start pulling out their phone and talking to me and the Asian couple wasn't laughing. Those guys don't know what happened. Callbacks aren't working. Oh no. And I and then I go, well, <laughs> this has been a disaster. Uh, <laughs> hopefully we don't have any reviewers tonight. And the guy goes to me, I'm from the age. The age oh, newspaper. No. And I went... <laughs> <laughs> so, you know what man reviews come and go oh what no. can we do and the second day it comes up like three stars or something that's and it hilarious said, show plagued by latecomers like dude, why don't you write a review if i'm funny or not yeah what the what fuck about this nothing to do with me no mentioning of the joke oh. or what made it unfunny or and then he said something like i loved it when he was talking about the war <laughs> and growing up but then he starts talking about dating and all that and in a festival that is inundated with stories of dating. Like I would have loved it if I had stuck to the to the war. Stuck, talk about the war, brown guy. Because I've been to yeah, thirty yeah. shows and they're all <laughs> talking about dating, and I'm I've sick had of it. Had enough of it. I go, but that's I'm saying how my this life is my, now is yeah. affected by everything I've been yeah. through. That's what the show is about. And so it's so funny. So I come out. My friend sees me, uh, Ivan Aristegueta. I don't know if you met him. Mm. Uh, and he says, uh, "What happened?" I said, "This happened tonight." I hate this. I hate the whole thing that happened tonight. Yeah. And he goes, you've just been baptized by fire. And he starts laughing. I go, I'm very angry. Don't laugh. And he goes, listen, first of all, reviewers, don't worry about them. Because I said, um, I know, I know. I think of everyone I like from, let's say, Chappelle to Mulaney to Norm MacDonald. I've never read one review. I don't know what people have reviewed them. They've gotten one star mm -hmm. or five. I just watch them because I like them. Yeah. He goes, don't worry about reviews. No one reads that. That's one. Also, I've had reviews on my show, two in one night, the same show. One gave me four and a half stars. One gave me three. Yeah. He goes, they have, so don't worry about reviewers. All this that happened is helping you create stagecraft and how to adapt to people coming in late and all that stuff. I went, uh, okay. But it was the only night where I felt it was just shit. The night was shit and it was out of my control. And then I realized, oh, I should just release control. Yeah. I can't control everything. Just mm. so the, when I went last year to the Melbourne Comedy Festival, I didn't print posters, I didn't pay for ads. I thought I'm gonna manifest an audience through meditation. <laughs> I sold more tickets than the year before with zero ads. What? Seriously? Yeah. People just showed up. People just showed up. I was getting 18 average per night, something like that, without ads. Wow, it's not bad. My friend goes to me, "Are you staying in a hotel?" I said, "Yeah, I booked my." Because ah, oh, the festival isn't paying for your. So do you think the festival pays accommodation? Because if they're not, then come stay in my place. So I stayed in his place. So I didn't pay accommodation. Perfect. I didn't spend money on ads. 
Beautiful. It was, uh, and I did it for fun. Yeah. Came back very happy from Melbourne. Made a little cash. Made two hundred and eighty dollars in profit. Yeah. Hey man, <laughs> we win. And what now. I mean, what I mean is like people usually go and they lose a couple of grand or whatever. Yeah. Oh yeah. And, uh, I know all that. So, so that, but for me, that moment of mm. uh, yeah, I want to leave this. I felt like I'm like my mother. I give and I give. Yeah. What do I get? Nothing. from you. I'm get nothing. I'm telling, making you trying to make you laugh. You don't want to laugh. Why are you here? You know what? When I'm gone, you'll appreciate, you'll appreciate me. <laughs> Fuck, man, that's that's nice. Oh, uh, uh, man, it's so interesting hearing stories like that because I, it's so relatable. Obviously, as a comedian, because yeah. I've I've had many humbling moments like that too. But yeah. that's what makes you who you are today, though. That you need those moments in order to to yeah. spring into who you are who who you are now. No, I've been you, through shit. I can yeah. I can handle this night. Well, you've this been evening. you've lived in fucking Lebanon and, and war as well, right? right? <laughs> yeah, don't forget about that. Yeah, the war. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. No, the humidity. That's <laughs> what I'm worried about. <laughs> oh, it takes so many showers. I don't know why. <laughs> Maybe it's the phosphor. The white phosphorus, <laughs> Yeah, mom. the phosphor. I think the it's white the white phosphorus. phosphorus. Yeah, but that, that's, why, that's why I love it so much. Do you think your kids have inspired you even more for your comedy? Yeah, I, I, I say. Also, you realize the healing power of comedy. Because I told a story how a woman made me upset. And I was sitting in the park going, I can't believe this woman spoke to me like this. And I'm very, very just angry. And have this internal dialogue. How could she? Bloody racist. What's she saying? Blah, 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 blah. And my son sees me and sits on my lap. because goes, Dad, I want to tell you a joke. And I go, mm. So in my show, I'm telling the story. I said, I thought, he thinks that my emotional uh, stability is his responsibility. Oh. Uh. Because kids do that. Like, oh, I want to make you laugh. Because mom and dad are always like, there's tension. Yeah. Oh. You go, I want to break the tension. I'm the funny guy. That's how probably most of us are in the Arab world and the bloody Middle East. Yeah. So I said to him, you don't have to tell me a joke. Like, I'm, I'll, I'll be fine. He goes, no, no, I have a joke. I said, what is it? And that's true. That happened. He goes, imagine you're in a room with no doors and no windows. How do you get out? He said, I don't know. How do you get out? He goes, stop imagining. <laughs> and I looked at him and I went, it's amazing how the universe sends you messages through children sometimes yeah. you just have to listen and then he goes i have another one if a, if an elephant farts i go just run along now yeah, yeah go okay go now you, you ruined the moment you yeah. ruined it. You yeah, ruined i was about it, to cry here so that was the yeah, joke yeah, in the yeah. show and i see a woman three days later i was watching um an american comedian i forgot the name at the town hall in melbourne and as i walked out after the show the woman goes fatty hi you won't probably remember we're sitting in the back of your show me and my boyfriend came and watched you i just want to say something He's been in therapy for over like eight years for anxiety. It's always been very severe with him. And that story you told about uh, your son, you have no idea what's happened in the last three days. Every time he gets a panic attack, or he goes, stop imagining. He says these two words to himself. Wow. And it regulates him so quickly. I want to say thank you so much. And I went, Holy crap! It's small Fuck. moments like this, shit. You realize, oh, okay, make me fucking a, emotional. Just thinking about yeah, it, like, yeah, damn, yeah. To hear that, like years of wow. therapy, and then yeah. the story that like your kid said. Yeah, imagine you're in a room with no doors. How do you get? Stop imagining. It's you're you're creating that room. Yeah, when I started comedy, like everyone saying, "Very funny, fatty. You're very funny." I went, "I'm very funny." <laughs> <laughs> me, 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 me. And then one woman, after six months in, she goes, I had a shitty week and you made me forget all about it. Thanks, man. She goes to me, thank you. And I went, oh, it's about them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's not yeah. about me. Oh. Yeah. And that changed my perspective in my first year. Okay, so it's about them. Yeah. That's why I see comedians yelling at the audience, fuck you, that's a funny joke. Mm. You go, why are you saying that to them? I hate that. <laughs> why, are you, why are you yelling at them? You should be this beacon of light on stage, the shining, I'm happy, come join me in this mood, come. Yeah, Not yelling at them, hundred percent. Yeah, it's weird. It's so funny. Me and him we talk about it all the time for our own shows too. Just because I've done that myself, where I didn't turn on the audience really. It was just I'm not as bad as like some examples I've seen, but yeah. But even that little bit of weird energy of almost blaming the audience, you immediately lose them, and then they the rest of the it. set it they just gets it. weird. And they feel you if you're afraid as well. Or everything they panic. feel everything they feel yeah. everything yeah 100 and so that's why yeah you're right i don't I, I don't understand now knowing all this how comedians who are even more developed and they're not amateurs they will just 
turn on an audience and yeah. be aggressive. I'm like, you're just ruining the whole. Si- I guess vibe. for them, probably the more established. I used to be a contender. <laughs> you know that line from a movie like uh, is it the champ? Or, like I used to be the c- yeah, contender, be, and now yeah. and now I have to please you. Right. I used to be on TV. I know. Yeah, it's that it's that kind of yeah, bit some of, of the, a bit of a chip on the shoulder, entitlement, yeah, yeah. the ego. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, you see it uh, sometimes. Yeah, it's so weak. Yeah, it's such a weak mentality, and and I'm like, oh, no wonder you're not doing anything. Yeah, you know what I learned the last few years, uh, not to be judgmental as well of uh, other forms. Like people say, oh, this guy's a musical comedian. This guy is a, he does a puns or one-liners or you know and all yeah. that, and mm-hmm. uh, like this guy's from TikTok, so he's he's more of a sketches guy, so uh, yeah, he's really? not a real comedian. I go, that all that way of thinking is a very, uh, it's coming from a scarcity mentality. Mm-hmm. If you come from an abundance mentality, mm-hmm. you go, are they bringing people joy? It's simple. Are they bringing them joy? Why does it have to be pigeonholed and pure stand-up? Or not a pure stand-up, especially nowadays. Yeah. yeah, the the lines have blurred in the world. The the blur. I went and watched. I don't know. You know, Nats. What I reckon. Do you know him? Nats. He does uh, what? It's cooking shows. I don't know if he's up to a million followers on yeah. YouTube already, but yeah. he does cooking and he keeps swearing. He's all heavily tattooed, mm. and he's represented by my management as well. So he got me tickets from Melbourne a few years mm. ago, and he's doing his YouTube channel show. He even has a microwave on stage. Put stuff in it. He's doing characters. He's singing. Puts on a mask that he puts on oh. his clips. He's taken that YouTube experience and brought it to them. Mm. We were they had sold out seven hundred seats that night, and people next to me. I'm telling you, they were slapping their thighs. They can't breathe. Oh wow! Laughing. Second day, the review comes out something like two stars or two and a half stars, and what? and I went, and then the woman and who wrote the review wrote. Well, if you're into that kind of humor, you probably would like it, but I didn't like it. It wasn't a good story. It's like saying, if you like opera, you probably will enjoy this, but I don't like opera. Two stars. <laughs> yeah. you, can't, you can't do I know, that. I know. Of course they like it. Right. They're his audience. They're yeah. coming to see him. Yeah. How was the experience? I mm-hmm. saw them like dying in laughter. That's the realest example that's, you that's can get. That's it. That was a five-star show for me. Right. And yeah. you go, two? And they go, oh, screw reviewers. Yeah, it's stupid. They don't yeah. know anything. So I put on Instagram the other day like a, a three-star review from and I wrote show plagued by latecomers. Guys, try to come in on time. <laughs> That's what white people think of us. Yeah, you yeah know? literally. That's, you know, I was yeah. always like, because Lebanese, they go, starts at eight. It's not, is it going to start at eight? It's not going to start at eight. We'll stop in and get, get a bite to eat. No. No, bro. It starts at eight. This is not 7.30 be there, please. <laughs> yeah, please be early to be on time. Seats, be yeah. early to be on time. There's parking. Show up the day before, please. And, and people go, yeah, I mean, we didn't know. We didn't know you're starting on time. Oh, my God. That's the most classic example. <laughs> we fucking, it's, it's so like our chill. biggest pet peeves, too, of I like know. people showing up. Mike, it says eight. Yeah, to nine. Yeah, even and even if you, better if, yeah. you, if it says two nine. <laughs> eight, eight to nine, meaning you can't come at 8.30. You've missed half of it. Bro, that's, and it, yeah, it's so frustrating. And it, it's not helping the stereotype. Amazing. Of, of, of Middle Eastern people. Yeah. And Africans, actually. African and also, I stopped caring about the stereotype. Let them think whatever they want to think. Yeah. This is us. We live life to the every emotion, man. Yeah. Look at your family. Look at my family. Every emotion is felt and amplified. So Manis Kalko says that. Like, in my family, you go, if someone stinks, you go, you stink. What the hell? Right, go right. shower. Yeah. Because, like, white people don't do that. His wife's family is more supportive. And I know. That's because, so true. But we say it to your face, you Oh, yeah. Stink. Yeah. What the fuck, man? What's wrong with you? Yeah. <laughs> you go, That's right. So dumb. <laughs> yeah. This amplified emotion. I know. I'm not going to apologize for it anymore. No. This is us. No, of course. Living loud. Yeah. Well, yeah. And 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 I agree with the the YouTube thing too. The and the, and the comedians being bitter about it. I I want to touch on it. It's it's important to me because I all, even to this day I still get, "Oh, he's a TikToker. Oh, he's a social media guy." I'm like, bro, I've been doing stand-up for almost 10 years. Yeah. But obviously a lot of people don't know that still to this day. Even my own audience doesn't know that. But okay. that's why that's it's... That's your power right, lies right there because it, you have the exactly, stagecraft. Exactly. That's why it's so sweet because when I go on tour next yeah. and I'm going to show the material I've been fucking working on this past two years, I'm like, oh, like they're going to know I'm a stand-up. Yeah, they're and also like, oh, tying in everything you do in your sketches. Oh, on yeah, stage. that's what I'm saying. It's translating, your storytelling. right? storytelling. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Man, that story about you taking that cab and the guy is like, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. and you're doing <laughs> yeah. all that. I lost it. I was sitting on the side. Oh, yeah, thanks. Comedians, yeah. you know, so we don't laugh usually. 
Who? We, the comedians, not oh, laugh. Comedians because never we've laugh. seen everything. Oh, like, I know. We said we go, that's funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you, know, you know how they, know. they go, oh, that, that's funny. Yeah. Which oh, means like I'm dying that, on the inside. I do it all the time. Yeah. means you're killing. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. They go, oh, that's funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Bruce Griffith said a joke last week. He goes, uh, I have a wife and two kids. That is... Um, until the husband pays the ransom. And it was one of those lines, <laughs> I lost lost it. I yeah. thought, that's such a freaking good line. I know. Oh God, I ruined it now. Like, oh, oh, sh- but no, anyway, no the gigs around Sydney. But uh, when you did the whole thing in the cab and you're doing the- Oh, the Latino? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, uh, <laughs> Burger King? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That line, Thanks, I just man. lost it. So the, the commitment to it, the acting yeah. it out, I went back and I said to Caesar, I said to, him, uh, to mm. the comedian Sydney, and I said, uh, that was so beautifully acted. This is what they mean. And I said that to him when people, they say they are influenced by their contemporaries. You go, Donatello, Raffaello was a contemporary of Michelangelo. You see, you can mm. feel the uh, influence of Michelangelo on Donatello, on Raffaello's work yeah. and all that. And so you see that every time. So we are contemporaries. You say something, I go, oh, the throat clearing I, God, that is so sweet. How come I haven't thought of that before? What else am I? Oh, yeah, my father and his eating. Or my, yeah. and suddenly it just triggers this. It comes to you. Comes to you. Go, why don't I discuss this stuff on stage? 100%. And you explore a facet of your comedy you didn't usually explore. No. Then you watch someone else doing real physical comedy. You go, I should be more expressive. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When I, and then you see someone doing, uh, using silence. Yeah. To his advantage, Equally. like really building. I go, oh, I should pace myself. Yeah, and then you st- you are a collection of everything you see around um, you, and then definitely. your your voice starts emerging. Mm-hmm. And they go, I keep saying you got to work 10, 15 years to become an overnight sensation. Yeah, <laughs> that's a classic. That's what it is. Hundred percent. Go. How come I haven't heard this guy? He should have been famous fifteen years ago. It's so funny. No, no, he I have. should not. No, have been no, famous. no, 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 no. I should not, have <laughs> not even famous. last year. I should not have even. been. <laughs> It's yeah. true, man. Yeah. It's and that's exactly it. It, it, it. Everything I learn about stand up now is through other comedians. Yeah, and then of you course, compile yeah. it for yourself, right? It's yeah. like I'll watch you, I'll watch someone else, I'll be like, Oh, okay, I'll take this from this person, that from this person, this from this person. How can I make it my own? And then yeah. and then you do it. And then yeah. all that with the combination of, you know, selling your jokes. Giving your all, being yourself. Be, oh, that beautiful. being you yourself, that's hard. Just, that's the hardest. Because yeah. I, when I'm telling my friends a story, for many years when I started stand-up, I wasn't like that on stage. I'd be more reserved. Yeah, because It wasn't yeah. me. Yeah. Now I don't care anymore. I've, yeah. uh, now in the last six months, I'd say, I started going, uh, if I want to act something out, like uh, I'm disgusted, I go, like, <laughs> <laughs> and I would commit, like, I would commit yeah, to yeah. it. And in the end, I go like, Ugh. Because I'm a bit shy. I don't want to <laughs> act it out. Yeah, no, yeah. it's like, this is it. Yeah. Because just go full on into full it. Full in, man. It's all in or nothing. Yeah. I've started yeah. to learn that recently, actually. Yeah. Recently, yeah. And then applying it takes a while. Applying but learning it, takes a while. it but yeah. Then, yeah. But then recognize it is the first step. And then it gets exciting after that. Because you're like, yeah. ah, fuck it. Yeah. But then that's when you really are funny. Because you're talking to your friends. It's, it's you talking to your Even friends. Even lines, I wouldn't say. You know, the, on, the Matildas last year. Didn't they like Matildas? Australia hosted uh, the World Cup for oh, women. Oh yeah, the Australian women's team, the Matildas. They yeah, made yeah, it yeah. all the way quarterfinals, semifinals, more than any male team mm. ever. And now it's that night. I was on stage and I said, "How good are these women? Are these Matildas?" And everyone went, "Yeah." I said, "They were so good." At one stage, I forgot I was watching women. Okay, <laughs> so the room is like yeah, I said, yeah. unbelievable, and they go, "Oh!" And then they laugh. What I saw, the, there's a bit of cheekiness in it. Yeah, but I wouldn't have said that line years ago. Yeah, right. You're too, too, you're too afraid of the. I'm afraid the of it. But when I said it, it was said in such a way we all agree that <laughs> that this is a joke, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, I am being. Right. This is not me. Yeah. I don't believe it. If they feel you believe it, they exactly, won't laugh. Exactly. They won't laugh. But if you're saying yeah. shit out of. Uh, that's true, man. It's so true. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, well, it's you because say- you were you 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 thought you were with your boys, you're with your friends. Yeah, you're at home, and you treat them like this that everyone gets on board. Man, I have. Uh, I mean, I don't know how many watch this episode, but because uh, it's one of the lines I say, a woman says something to me that's really shocking in the bedroom, and I go, I was really shocked when she said that to me because I'm not used to like women talking. <laughs> and then I move, and women and men equally just start just slapping their thighs. Like the women are laughing because mm. I'm Lebanese. Like I'm not used to women talking. Yeah. And that line, uh, some women get like offended of course, yeah. by it. I would say though, 
less than one percent yeah from everything i've seen mm. and that's where you go the courage to be disliked that's oh, okay nice. some people Beautiful. can dislike you yeah it's okay because you actually you're not doing it out of malice mm-hmm. doing because isn't this funny it's good intentions I was watching Louis C.K., a great writer. Oh, my God. He's a great writer, sorry, but he's a great writer. Objectively speaking, speaking, one of the best, to be honest. Yeah, that line of his when he goes, uh, he's in his bed with this woman, and she says to him, uh, hey, daddy, he goes, please, like, young lady, young lady. (laughs) Don't go, because they're like 17 years older than her or whatever. Uh, She goes, why? Is it because you have daughters? Do you want me to call you daddy? He goes, no, it's because I have a father. (laughs) And that's what I called him <laughs> yeah. when he fucked me. And they go, oh, <laughs> oh man. Louis. And that's Louis, so Louis. on brand. So Louis. And people laugh. He goes, thanks for laughing uh, about my father fucking me. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And the people goes, because I wasn't laughing at the time <laughs> because I was coming. Yeah, and he goes, like oh, one my God. Another. He's digging. And he's rolling. And, and Jim Jeff is like this. He goes Very down good. to the mud, to the filth. And rolls it. and just rolls oh, in it. So How far can I take it? And you go, that's inspirational for me, even if it's not my style. What is that idea? You go, hey, funny. Oh, mm. wait, wait, wait. Just dive a little bit. Is there more? Mm. Dive even under that. Is there more? He once said, Louis, in one interview, when I try a new joke, I try the worst version of it, the darkest, worst one. And people are all horrified, they're walking out and it's shit. And then I start dialing it back until to get it's I get perfect. to a stage. Mm. Where it is horrific, but <clears throat> people are still there and laugh. And go, but that's what he starts with. Ah, oh shit! That's the, his style, though. The but courage to be disliked. You have to be disliked. <laughs> Don't worry about it. You, everyone needs to find that version for themselves. Yeah, it doesn't have to be shocking humor. No, no, it, that's no, what that's I'm saying. You just have to find that level by what, like for for, for example, I, I don't do dark jokes like Louis does, but I do racial jokes that could be yeah. offensive. So sometimes I will go deep with like, I don't know, I'm, I'm making fun of like Chinese people in a certain example. Yeah. But I'll go deep with it. And then like, you know, some people are probably really offended, but some people are loving it. Yeah. I'm like, oh, okay, like this is pretty good, but maybe it could be better. And then you just keep doing more, more and more people laugh. You're like, ah, perfect. I found who, it. Who was the master of that? Don, Rick, Don Rickles. Don Rickles. Yeah. My OG. God. Yeah. OG of that. So good. Offends everyone. Yeah, yeah. Who cares? To the yeah, point where any, you have, do you have any Chinese people? Oh, and he starts <laughs> dust the teeth. And then he goes, oh, no, what about my black brothers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, ah, we're all lovely old brothers. Any yeah. Jews here? And he go, whoa, Don. Like, Don, boom, 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 boom. It's crazy. Unbelievable. Man. I know. Unbelievable. Like, no one could do it like he does it. it it's uh, it's almost rare nowadays to see that. Is Bill Burr's probably. Burr or Joey Diaz, man. You know Joey yeah. Diaz? Oh, see, you keeps telling me about him. Oh, my God, you dude. See, He's one of my favorite. Like, He's a true comic. I've seen him only in the interviews with Joe Rogan. He no, pops up. He, he doesn't pop up on my feed as a comic. Oh man, you gotta see his stand up. I'll go, I'll it's go. It, I, 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 you'll get hooked. Man, uh, Caesar was telling me a joke of Joey Diaz. He's saying he has one about uh, you can't look threatening when you have a drink. Yeah, yeah, and a straw in it. And yep. he goes, "Hey, buddy, I'm, I'm gonna fuck you up." And yeah, then yeah. He goes, yeah, trying to get you strong. such a good one. And I said that is a, such a funny line. I, I want to watch. I want to watch more of oh, it. Oh man, you got There's so many going. I'll send you some good ones. If yeah, he's but uh, people try class. to imitate Bill Burr or something, but they don't realize the amount of writing levels. Oh, yeah. to make it balanced mm-hmm. along the way that he writes. If he's going after women, like he oh, actually, yeah, yeah. he makes it quite goes after men and I know and he, all that. He's man. He, yeah, he 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 does. He he goes both ways. He he he's not. Going one way at all, he'll he'll hit everyone. Yeah, but that's what makes him special. Not yeah. a lot of people can do that because usually yeah, people have they only go with one way and they're comfortable with that one way. You roast a comedian these days in the green room, they get offended. Oh, that's the weirdest part. You go, you're I'm, a comedian. I, I, you should like all of us should be roasting each other, day and night. Yeah, to get thicker skin. Yeah, and you're just a little bitch, <laughs> a little bee, little hot. bee. Hot. <laughs> Beehatch. I'm I'm an immigrant. I can't say beehatch. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I guess we'll we'll wrap it up. But uh, I guess good. We'll, yeah, yeah. Finally, we can have some chai to more. I love how a Persian guy is going to live in, that my language is violent. Like I'm going. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in COVID, we had it the worst, man. I'm we sure had, you we got did. sprayed by everyone. Like oh yeah. <laughs> What's the most uh, aggressive Arab 
Oh country. God! I, I, in terms of speaking, no, depends if no. I'd like, say I would say because we all share the same consonants and vowels. Oh, because it's very similar. Yeah, it depends if you're if you're wanting to be angry. Well, not even angry. Uh, it sounds angry because that's what the, everyone always Saudi says. Arabian. Sound, Saudi, Saudi Arabian. Saudi Arabian. It's like. Oh, well, okay. It's very just in your face. <laughs> that's kind of a weird one. Yeah. Egyptian yeah. is more uh, like. You're doing the same thing like that. We said a hundred times. You don't have to worry about it. This is Egyptian. شو بدك مني يا زلمه؟ طيب حل عم تيزي انه بتجي لعندي صبح وعشيه وتركني نام يا بدي ارتاح ناس لبنيز. اوكي؟ بس ثن يو جيت ساودي ارابيان از كان اوف مور لايك هو جعني بيكمز مور اوف ا اوه اتس لايك ا بيج ثينج يا. كان ساوند تشاينيز. يا. ذي ار تشاينيز. ذي ار تشاينيز اوف ذا عرب وورلد. Oh, like so I, uh, my friend, uh, I said, uh, stays like last because we were talking to him. He said the woman was very offensive to him. And he goes to her, so what kind of Chinese are you? Like Japanese, Malaysian? And she, she got so offended because he goes, what kind of Chinese are oh, you? Oh, he said Chinese. I didn't <laughs> Japanese, Malaysian, what kind of Chinese? Which one? Which Chinese? Which, which Chinese yeah, are yeah, you? Because yeah. she had told him like Lebanese, like you're know, like in the Middle East or Oh, old. that's so funny. And he goes, oh, really? What kind of Chinese are you? That's like, um, dead ass, just serious. Dead ass. Oh my God. And he worked, was working at the museum and she was one of the oh, also so cur- curators. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> kind of, Christ. What kind of thing you ask me? <laughs> Not even Asian. What's your favorite kind of Chinese? The Malaysians. <laughs> uh, that's my favorite kind of Chinese. <laughs> Oh my god! And this is the that's kind of amazing. stuff comedy should talk about, and not not worry about like yeah. yeah that's right. what I fucking do all the time. I just I yeah. just I, that's I why do, we got along straight away. Like when we first yeah, met. Yeah. yeah yeah bloody hell man. man. We, when I do crowd work now, well I've always been, but I do it more now. But I just fucking go like yo man, you're brown. Like what part of like, yeah, yeah, like yeah. India are you from? Like yeah. just right away. Like some people are, are afraid to even say brown. Yeah, but that's how I grew up. I was yeah. raised saying yo like yo I'm a, this is my brown boy. Like yeah, same as morning. Like, you know what I'm saying like I. I use the same terminology I grew up with yeah. because it's authentic, right? Yeah. But that, that's the thing. As, as offensive as, as it may be, you can't take away the fact that it is authentic. Yeah. And, and, and that's brown. people... And he's brown. It's not... I'm not lying. Yeah. Right? And so it's like... It's, it's so much more, more freeing and liberating when you, yeah. when, you, when you start doing that. I say like, uh, who is white? They go, oh, yeah, it's a Russian, and they go, it's a, this is like white, white. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I go, right. you can't like we don't want, we just want normal, yeah, normal yeah, white. Yeah. Where are you from? Oh, any brown people? And this girl goes, hey, this guy. I go, where are you from? He goes, Morocco. I said, that's proper brown. Why is she? And she goes, yes, he. And she starts rubbing his head in the show. So why are you rubbing his head? Is Genie gonna come out or? <laughs> and and ah, and he's yeah. laughing and she's laughing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the white people's like, yeah. Ooh, are we allowed <laughs> to laugh at this? I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, okay. you know. Yeah, and there was actually one, uh, one, one final example I say is uh, I was at a, um, I was at a show in Melbourne actually during the festival, Fringe Festival, and there were all white people in the room, thirty people, one Nigerian guy. Okay, yeah. I get to the part of my joke I do about immigrant pronouns. I don't know if you've seen it. I think you may have seen, it, but anyway, um, I do a joke about immigrant pronouns. I'm not gonna give it away because I'm going on tour, yeah. but. Um, and it's, it's a joke about Nigerians. Yeah. And it's like, I think I it's one of my best accents I can do. One of the yes, best impressions. Yes, I remember. Right? You did at Factory Theater. Yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah. It's even better now. It's like I worked on it. But um, I'm doing this joke, and you can tell as soon as I mentioned the word Nigerian. Everyone's everyone like, looked at him. Yeah, perked No, up. not even they looked perked at him. Up. They, they perked they, up. They, they, they knew he's there, but they also perked up, and they're like, like it's like it, the sucked. The, the, the soul the energy sucked. Yeah, yeah. But I do the whole thing, the whole joke. This guy is keeling over, yeah. losing it. <laughs> I look at everyone else. This is no, uncomfortable. This is, and then you go. He laughed. That's okay. And I'm like, that's hey for, guys, that, look! I literally that's said, for him. I, I, at this point, and I really, I'm like, guys, look! He's laughing. Yeah, he's laughing. He's loving this. Yeah. And then they're, they're, and then they uncomfortably, ha, ha, ha. I'm like, all right, anyway, whatever. <laughs> and then I just continue. But yeah, um, it's just yeah, so fascinating, you know? My brother came to one gig and it wasn't up to my usual standard, but a lot was involved. The room, the layout, the time people arrived, the, it was just, diff- and he goes to me, uh, that wasn't up to your usual, I said, and the show like afterwards, 
killer, right? Mm-hmm. Show it was great. And I go, that was up to my usual. And I gave the same energy I usually give. Huh. Said an audience has an intelligence of its own. It has a life force. And actually that group has an energy, all of it, that is collective. And he goes, yeah, but you should be able to. I said, the thing is, you're watching a show. You should see the kind of gigs we do. Mm. Where it's just death. Some of them, some of them are great. Some so that's comedy for you. It's so fickle. You never know how the night's gonna go. If they start off on the right foot and they all get on board with like a dark, then you have smooth Maybe. sailing. If one person <gasps> gasps and then go, room goes, what happened? And then that sucks energy. You'll take five minutes to recover. Yeah. Through other jokes, just to get everyone back on board. Uh, George Carlin used to say it's the only art where it's like jazz where if the audience reacts in a certain way, you can adjust based on their reaction because mm. that's stand-up. The only other form I know of is jazz. It was, uh. That is improvised like this with people like, oh, the energy changed. I should probably tweak yeah. for them. And you go, jazz is like this and comedy is like Oh, that's true. That's great. That's, that's why it's good to do crowd work in, in those moments. Not even full crowd work. You just get them back on quick, board. Yeah, yeah, little chats. You know, you know Quick, easy chat, you know, make them forget about it for a second. Go back into the material. I get them on your side. I get. I talked so much shit today. People are gonna think this guy's famous or something. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. Maybe it's one okay. day, but also will, that's not will. the aim. I was talking to Heggy about this, and uh, I was saying, he's saying to me, it's amazing how many comedians say, measure success by. I'm gonna fill up a 200 seater, mm. and then next year it's like a 500, for me like a thousand, and maybe the state theater, and then 2,000. <laughs> and he goes, no one thinks I'm gonna work on my craft and become a better comedian oh this joke would be perfect by next mm. year i would have really polished it up it's gonna make so many people happy no one th- because it was rare to talk think of the craft as the goal not yeah, the selling yeah. of the tickets the process and i said yeah it depends what people want out of comedy and for me it's like as long as they're happy that that story of the boyfriend with the anxiety and okay that's what it is that's a, that's what that's what it's about yeah. i agree i agree I, I i the 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 journey is more important than the destination for me too and th- you never reach the destination. There is no destination. What, what, what is the end? There is no end. What? T- 5,000 seats? 8,000? Oh, what else? What happens after that? Arena and, and then what? And Movies then what? and then what? Kevin yeah. Hart? And yeah. then? Yeah, it's exactly. Then the what? ego always wants more. I know. I always yeah. talk about how it's like, we, we always make the example of, you know, you know, you know Drake? No. Yeah. yeah. Drake could have easily stopped after the first hit album he had. Right? Yeah. He was already Billboard charts. But then he made another one. Again, Billboard charts. He could have stopped there. Nope. Another one. Another one. Another, you know what I'm saying? It kept going, right? And he's still going. Yeah. But the point is, he, there's no des- there's no, there's no destination for him either. It's like so he's it's just he's just enjoying just the, the process. Yeah, the work. Yeah. He just loves the process. People that's like that's why he's great. Same with Kevin Hart. He keeps going. There's no nothing bigger than what he's already done. Yeah. It's just he's just enjoying it and he's loving it along the way and he's building a legacy and that's why he's so successful. Yeah. It's not because he's reaching some destination. Yeah, He's just enjoying the moment. Yeah, just focus on being, being the best you can be. Yeah. And everything else will follow. It'll fall, yeah. And It'll come right to you. you. You don't have to chase it. It'll no. come to you. It Whatever's meant for you will come, yeah. will come to your doorstep. We could, you could very well, I'm not saying it won't, but you could very well never sell out an arena. Like I could never sell it one day. But what if you're selling out theaters for the rest of your life? That's what not fucking bad. What if I'm selling uh, five nights in a row of 200 seats? Well, yeah, well, you know what, what I mean? How good is that? And you're How making good? a living, you're happy, you have, your, your kids are fed, you're, you're yeah. having a... Ah, screw them. But uh, <laughs> what I mean is... <laughs> They're too high IQ for me, I don't like this. Bloody give them give my iPad, yeah, give them emotion, my iPad. Emotional stability, <laughs> what the hell? Real conversation? What the fuck? Yeah, I get you. That's though. it, yeah, so it's good, man. I, I, I love that we share the same mindset and yeah. um, uh, I guess if you were to tell the viewers or someone out there who wants to aspire to become a comedian one day, what yeah. would you tell him? I'll say what George Carlin said. He said when he started stand-up comedy, he used to write from the front of his head and speak from here. He goes, and these thoughts were, oh, what would people find funny? What is it that they might think, this is funny, would they think it's funny? Because that's writing from here. He goes, later in his career, after he took psychedelics, <laughs> and then saw, uh, he said, I watched all these b- singers, like, doing stuff like imagine all the people living, sharing all the world. He goes, these people are talking about stuff they really were passionate about. He goes, I started writing from the back of my head, meaning instead of what would they think is funny, I started writing, 
what do I want to say? Mm. Because that changed his career. When he said, what do I want to say that follow? What do you want to say? And then make it funny. Mm. And that takes stagecraft, skill, writing, years. It doesn't matter. It might be shorter for some, the journey. But if you stick to what is in my heart that needs to come out, what has meaning for you that needs to come out, then you become inimitable. No one can then steal your joke. And then people go, that resonates with me. And you year by year, you carve a niche of people who really think like you. Then you have a following. You can live from it. Simple as that. Good advice. Facts. Facts, no printer. No cap. <laughs> Skibbity. <laughs> Skibbity <laughs> toilet. <laughs> so dumb. <laughs> so stupid. Plug anything you have into this camera right here. Ah, nothing. I have nothing. I just social my shows. Socials? Oh, yeah, my socials. If you look up Fadi Kasab, <laughs> F-A-D-Y-K-A-S-S-A-B. I think you'll, uh, I think Jamie will put them on screen. I love saying Jamie, Jamie. in every podcast. <laughs> it's just as if we're the Rogans. Yeah, the Rogan But yeah, like uh, some are different, but in general, Fadi Kasab, comedian, F-A-D-Y. Yeah. Come to my shows if you want or don't. All over Australia and eventually hopefully come to Canada and US. Canadian nights. I'll do that. There you go. Just do that on stage. Thanks, Thanks for having me, man. Yeah, Thanks for having bro. me. It's such a great, great little chat. Appreciate it. The tea was meh. <laughs> Cut that part. <laughs> Sick, man. Oh, man. I would That's love it. that, too. That's it. I don't know where I put my...